Hello everyone, welcome to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we're going to be playing some Arkham Horror today, but we're not continuing a campaign. We're not starting a campaign. We're doing a scenario pack today, which is a fully standalone set of horrible cards that we will be trying to overcome today. Uh, this is our second attempt at Curse of the Ruguru, the scenario uh, pack, except for this time we're playing standalone mode, which we've never played before. Um, no. Because even when we played, like, to learn, we did just the first campaign yeah, and, of, of the Night of the Zealot, and we just set it up like it was the campaign and did everything. Yeah, like, didn't, yeah. didn't do any upgrades or anything like that. Um, so it's our first time playing a scenario pack again. We're, like, newish to the game. We're late to the party. Um, but we have, like, all the Arkham Horror stuff, pretty much, uh, for Arkham Horror, the LCG. And we're going to be playing lots of it on the channel. So this is your first video you've ever found of us playing Arkham Horror. We have playlists, which should be linked down in the video description. Or you can check the playlist section at youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table, where you can find us playing through campaigns uh, from the past. And in the future, uh, we'll be playing through more of it. And there's Stella Two Socks. Hello. Without Stella Two Socks, uh, fellow awesome Canadian, sending us this amazing expansion. I don't think we would still have it yet. I, I don't think it's still something that you can find in Sock in Canada to, no. at this point. But we have played this in the um, campaign mode where you add it in as a side scenario, a little side quest in a campaign, which we did during our Dunwich Legacy blind playthrough on the channel. So you can check that out. So we do have some experience with the scenario. Uh, so this is our second attempt. And we'll see if we can pull it out. Although we're not playing with the same investigators that do not have upgraded experience in their decks other than the little bit of experience we spent. Actually, it's not that little. Nine experience is pretty good, like eight or yeah, nine experience. Yeah, I mean, that's like three scenarios, yeah. possibly, if you're getting three so, scenarios. So what we're doing today is we're also trying out investigator decks. Uh, you never played Stella before or anything, right? Nope. Like, this is your first time. Like, we pulled cards from her pack. Yeah, I've played, for sure. I've played red cards. Yeah, yeah, I played some of those red cards, too. Yeah, uh, I like red cards. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're interesting. <laughs> They're interesting. Um, but this is the first time I'm playing with anything from Nathaniel Cho's Investigator deck. So what we're doing today is we're playing Investigator Starter decks. We're coming at them as this is our like kind of like first experience of a, of a true Investigator Starter deck. We've had two of them in the pool for building decks for our campaigns. We've never played with these Investigators specifically. But like we said, we've had Stella for a while. We've pulled some cards out to put into other decks and play with them through campaigns. But I've not tried a lot of these Nathaniel Cho Guardian cards. But we are restricting today's playthrough to playing with the Investigator Starter decks as they are built. But we are doing the um, we are doing the standalone mode where we spend. You can spend up to like fifty experience or something crazy if you want. But for every like nine experience or ten experience or whatever, you have to take an extra weakness in your deck. Uh, and those cards keep me up at night, so I chose to do a limit of nine experience. And another cool part is we wanted to see how the upgrades that are only included in the deck kind of help the deck out. So uh, today and yesterday, we spent some time going through the cards that are in these packs, looking at the upgrades. We spent up to 9 XP worth of upgrades from the pack only, put them in the deck. So we'll see how they go here. And we've upgraded without um, your help yeah yeah so we, we'll we did it on our own so goes. so don't follow what we do <laughs> this is not a how to build the decks or how yeah. to upgrade your decks or how to play with the investigators properly <laughs> uh since we're kind of new we're kind of experiencing this it's kind of like we're treating it as still like the progression kind of blind kind of just having fun with the game figuring it out so yes i know curse of the rogue has been out since 2016 i know some of you have had these investigator starter packs since uh late 2020 fall 2020 I've played the crap out of them, have done tons of campaigns with these investigators and or their cards that are in the packs, have determined that some upgrades suck and some cards suck and you shouldn't play with this card or this is how you should use this card more, more efficiently and this is how you should beat the Roguru with a blindfold on. We have none of that experience. We don't care. We're just having fun today playing the standalone scenario. It's new to us, right? Yeah. Keep in mind it's new to us. We're having some casual fun today. Uh, we're still going to try to beat it. I want to I kill the stupid werewolf or... Do whatever it is, collecting the doll and all that stuff that you need to do. Um, so obviously spoilers, if you've never played a standalone pack before, uh, we're going to be poking at it, flipping cards over, seeing spoilery stuff if you plan on playing this in the future. I recommend, based on all the blind playthrough stuff we've done in Arkham Horror, that's kind of like the best way to experience the game. After that, you kind of just burn your collection. You should never play it again because um, it's useless. Uh, just kidding. Totally kidding. Totally kidding. 
It uh, is fun playing blind, though, and not knowing what's coming up. Yeah, but now I want to play again some of these campaigns, knowing what we know and what we don't know still. We didn't yeah, see true. so much stuff. And I want to go through them again, especially after taking a break from them, going through them again. Like, we won't, we won't remember. remember everything. We might remember key points, yeah, but not everything. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> but anyways, I, I think the game is still highly replayable, even though it seems like it shouldn't be. Because, uh, you know, it seems kind of legacy campaign style, but it's like, you know, lots of story, lots of hidden choices. But uh, I still think a few playthroughs through a campaign before you start remembering all the options and things and, and knowing what to do where. But yes. Some of you who know all the treacheries in a scenario, in a campaign and what you're going to deal with in certain points of the campaign and why you should put cards in your deck if you're playing a certain campaign. I don't know if we'll ever get to that level, but I know there's people where that level exists where it's like, okay, we're playing the Circle Undone. So we should choose only from these six investigators because they're the best for it, playing a two-player. And, and we need this in our deck because this is yep, going to happen. We need these cards at this point. We'll upgrade to these cards before this scenario. Otherwise, we won't be able to handle that key moment that comes up. Yeah. You know, and like make sure we make this choice, not that choice. I understand there are people who like game the game that hard, and you can. So like the amount of hours and time and effort not even playing the game, just studying the game and learning the game uh, and the decks and the card pool and all that up to that point. It's very deep. Like, it's definitely worth your money. You can get crazy with this. But we're not at that point. We're not at that point. No. So keep that in mind. Be gentle. Yeah, we play too many <laughs> other games to be there. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to, hard to dive deep. We're, we kind of go wide a little bit on games. So instead of just going deep on a single game. Yeah. Um, at least lately, that's how it's been. Whoa, Stella hasn't played Stella yet? What? What? Maddie, how, how is that? Po like, it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> uh hello christopher welcome back welcome back hello tara and everyone else of course but of course the highlighted names who support the channel by clicking the join button i mean yeah they get personalized they, hello they have little icons beside their names i can't <laughs> i can't not see those names james, oh, james hello yeah, we didn't see hello james is in there too nathaniel's really interesting says james to me i've played him once so far and waiting to play him again uh based on his cards and dabbling with him a little bit he uh definitely might be like, uh, yeah, makes me want to play Guardian again. Uh, yeah, the idea behind Nathaniel Cho uh, is he doesn't care for, like, weapons. He's not the usual boring, try to draw your weapons, pay a whole bunch of resources to put your weapons in, you need your weapons to get plus this and extra damage and all that. He's like uh, one of those, um, I guess, classes or factions or heroes or characters or whatever you want to call them from whatever card game, where he's, like, focused on events. So he's out of the Guardian, he's all about attacking and stuff, but it's all based off event play, not off asset play. Which I feel like Guardians, I don't know all the Guardians, but the ones I've, I've experienced with, it seems like assets are key. Get those assets in early, or play cards that find you those assets. Generate resources, slam the assets on the board, and then try to just deal damage at some point. But it's like a ramp up. This guy, I feel like, you get his boxing gloves, and then all you have to do is get some events... And you could be doing crazy attacks all over the place. It's crazy. And yes, he's Scorpion from Mortal Kombat because he yells, get over here on a card. <laughs> I guess. Sure. Sure. Sure he's Scorpion. Anyways, he was looking through the deck yesterday. He said yep. it multiple times. No, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I didn't do the voice of Scorpion every time I, I played the card or draw like the you card. You want that in your deck just so you can say it at that key moment. Yeah, I debated upgrading it just so it could be a better get over here. But uh, I did not. I did not. <laughs> Matouche found Nathaniel boring. Uh, interesting. Okay. That's like a completely opposite of what I see online too when we're looking at the investigator packs. A lot of people find Nathaniel like the most fun and interesting one. Um, which is crazy. It's so straightforward and simple. But what I'm understanding is he, is he just does one thing good, which I think is good for new players. So I picture some of the players I want to get my Nathaniel deck and, and, and teach them new players. I want to hand them a Nathaniel deck and start a weekly campaign with these players that can just play from that deck, upgrade from that deck, only worry about that pool, and only worry about one job. Go smash monsters or cultists, punch them in the face with your boxing gloves, take them out with a one-two punch, uh, and it keeps it straightforward. I'm so happy they did that and kept it pretty straightforward, uh, but I am excited. Personally, after reading it, I'm like, okay, I see what they're doing, but the deck has a lot of weaknesses. I cannot wait to start tweaking uh, Nathaniel's deck and, and swapping cards out and putting other cards in, but we're not doing that today. Um, but yeah, there's some core set cards, some cards we've already played with, and I've played with in other Guardians that I would love to put in this deck, but they didn't come with. So I, I understand they definitely wanted to give more cards to the card pool, which I'm all about. 
uh, which is why I want to buy two copies of all the Investigator Starter Packs. We have one set, but I want to get a second one when they're reasonably priced in Canada. I can find them where they come in stock and they don't disappear within seconds. Uh, I would love to have a whole set of spare Investigator decks so that when I'm teaching new players or having players that are more casual come over and play and we are playing a campaign, they don't have to go through an entire card pool searching for upgrades or I don't have to do any work between playthroughs upgrading their decks for them or anything weird like that. Uh, I can just hand them that's the pack that has limited choices and they can just build from that and figure that they only have to know all the cards in the actual product pack for the Investigator Starter Deck, which I think is an amazing idea. And other thing is if you play him solo or two-player Matouge, I can see why he's not that interesting either, because he's, like, very straightforward, right? I, I can see if you're playing this, like, four-player, and he's, like, the fighter at the table, and you just play the base deck, you're just fighting, you're doing great. Everyone else is getting clues, you know, doing what they need to do. Uh, I think it'd be more fun in that case just playing your role, but... Yeah, obviously, if you've been playing the game for years, and you're playing one of the other thousand investigators in the game, that may be more interesting. And all the other card pool, it's like... You have to understand they took a step back and we're like we need something that's like experienced players want to buy it because there's cool cards inside they'll never play with it. they don't care about this starter deck you know maybe even the investigator is a little boring but you have to understand it's based on like a new player walking up to the table or walking up to your group joining you for the first time and learning the game it's not a bad deck to give to them yes they might get frustrated as i do when they're trying to get a clue off of a location and nathaniel can't really do that unless you get certain cards into play and if you see them even um but yeah, I think it's good that it keeps it less complex. So it's like, just do your job. You know, here's your thing that it does. Just focus on that. We'll upgrade your deck as you learn the game more. We'll upgrade your deck with upgrades, which will get you better at getting clues. Maybe get you better at doing invasion tests and stuff. Maybe it's some more willpower in your deck. You know, it gives you that later. I think they did a beautiful job of balance there to make. That's, that's why these products are like the hottest products in the game. Because new people want them and experienced players want them. I want two copies of each just so I can have more, teach more players the game and grow the player base of this game. And I think they do a good job of that. FFG sucks at printing enough of them, but uh, that's a good problem to have, I guess. Mm -hmm. Anyways. All right. Uh, uh, just one thing. Uh, no. Christopher says, got my girlfriend to watch this as well. So we just want to say hi to Christopher's girlfriend. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> wink. Uh, blink twice if you need help, okay? <laughs> blink twice. Wink, wink twice if you need help. If you need to call the police or anything, he's forcing you to watch this and it's like torture, let us know. We'll get you out of it. <laughs> we'll cancel the stream if we need to. Uh, but Matush does say, though, that it can be boring if you don't have enemies. Uh, agreed. Uh, it's, I it's felt like, like I'm waiting in the lobby the whole time for enemies to come out. I, 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 that same thing happens. The same thing happens to me with any Guardian I play. I feel like all the decks you guys have built me with, like, a Zoe or a Roland in the past playing those guys, even, even with uh, William York and stuff, I remember, sometimes I'd just be sitting there and, like, if I could just get an enemy, some of these cards in my hand would be cooler and I could actually destroy something and then get a clue off a location or, you know, those kind of weird situations. I feel like that happens to Guardians in general. Or like you're playing your assets, you get your guns down and then you're like... <laughs> okay, where's these enemies? <laughs> Meanwhile, the, the, the agenda's advancing. You're not, you're not progressing the act because you can't pull your weight and get any clues. Uh, that just happens as Guardians in general, I think. But there are cards that can help you. But most of those cards that help you get clues, you need to, after you defeat an enemy, get a clue from your location. <laughs> it's like, get out of here. But I understand. It's a balance thing, right? It's definitely a balance thing. I think Nathaniel is bringing out his inner lumberjack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Janet also snuck in too. Hi, Janet. Oh, hello, 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 Janet. Uh, trying to like go up and see the comments, but... Okay, all right. Uh-oh, Kate says, I feel like Rob may regret this statement about Guardians after we make him play Father Mateo. What is Father Mateo? Uh, what, he's a uh, mystic. Mystic. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. So, but I, I don't know what version of Father Mateo I'm going to get, because uh, the poll, uh, thank you for that, that reminder. Um, I, Mel will talk about Stella in a bit, Bob. Don't don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> we're, we're not going anywhere. Um, but yeah. Um, the poll. The poll. So uh, Kate's talking about we're, we're playing an upcoming Forgotten... Uh, the Forgotten Age campaign is coming up next for us for our blind playthroughs. Uh, we'll most likely be starting that next Sunday. I'll schedule the stream soon. 
Um, but we had our viewers, like you, got to vote on which investigators we play. There was a uh, option to vote for which investigator Mel plays, which Ursula Downs won. There was an option to vote for which investigator I play, which Ursula Downs was a close second, but Father Mateo won. So I'm playing Father Mateo, she's playing Ursula Downs. We had some of our producers who support us on Patreon and on YouTube, who back the channel, uh, all work together or work separately, made some decks, submitted some decks to us, uh, and I put them in a poll. That poll is up right now, and you can go vote now if you're watching this later. The, the poll will be going for another five or six days. Um, I think it goes till Friday, so if you're watching this within the week after this episode aired, go spend some time, go through the decks if you want to vote on which style of Father Mateo I'm going to play. But it seems like Ursula the Down is kind of like straightforward what she's going to do, I think. Um, but Father Mateo, it feels like looking at some of those decks quickly, browsing through some cards and some descriptions, it's like the Father Mateo I could play feels like he could be like vastly different, I feel. I don't know. I'm not sure. I feel like I want to play with him a few times before we we get into the playthrough, but it's fine if we don't. Um, but uh, the poll, which I will put in the live chat right now, is also down below in the video description. Uh, if you're watching this later and you don't have the live chat on in the side window. Uh, but yeah, if you can, take some time. Thank you to everyone who's voted already. Uh, even if you don't know the game that well and you just want to go look at some deck lists, they are linked in the poll. If you want to look at them based on cards or the description or the name of the deck even. If you just want to vote based on who has the most clever deck name, go nuts. It's all good. Um, but yeah, so go and vote uh, at the link in the chat. I just dropped it in the live chat. It's in the video description. You have about five, six days from now. Uh, you can impact. We have a bunch of votes already. I'm quite impressed by the amount of people who took the time to go through that and pick the deck that Mel's going to play and help pick the deck that I'm going to play. Um, but there's still some close races there. So don't feel like your vote won't count at this point. You can get in there and maybe your vote changes it between one deck or the other. Um, but yeah, so... Which deck should we play with? Vote now. <laughs> so yeah, Forgotten Age, next weekend. Watch for it on the channel. Subscribe so you do not miss when we go live. Turn on your notifications. You'll be notified when we go live and start that campaign. But you can watch along and play along with us. Even if you can't watch them live on Sundays, uh, you can watch them later during the week and still comment on how we spend our experience, how we upgrade our decks. We leave that in your guys' hands. You can vote in comments uh, with a thumbs up on comments you'd like to see us save or spend or experience, go on a side quest, whatever it is. Uh, you guys totally control that. So as we play along, you can get involved um, each week as we play through. We play through every Sunday. We've been playing Arkham Horror every Sunday for the last four or five months, I yeah, feel it's like it's while. been. It's been a while now. Um, we, just, we just keep moving into the next campaign. But this week, we're taking a break between the campaign to allow people more time to vote on the decks. So that's why we're playing a standalone scenario today. But we're going to keep Arkham Sundays, Arkham Horror Sunday going as long as we can. Uh, we have lots of content to play through. We've got lots of standalone scenarios. We've got return to boxes. We have we could play through some of these scenarios, uh, these campaigns again, uh, even the way they are. We don't have to return to yet. We could still play through them again. Yeah, and experience yeah, yeah. Them. Different investigators. Exactly and, yeah, what I was yeah. going to say next. Yeah, different investigators and stuff. So, yeah, we're going to be playing Arkham Horror on the channel for the foreseeable future. It may change. Sometimes it might not be on Sunday. Um, maybe we take a break from the game and play a different Arkham Horror Files game on Sunday, but if you're looking for some Arkham Horror playthroughs on Sunday, uh, and you want to be depressed, uh, come and watch us, uh, struggle through Arkham Horror games. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, uh, that, that's the plug. Uh, while you talk about that though, Janet does have a quick question. No. Um, are your campaign playlists from the core box or are they from expansion? Both. So. Let's see. Let's see. Let's do it right now. YouTube. Let's see if we can go to youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. Yeah, because Janet just wants to make sure she's watching something that is maybe specific to the core set and yes. not so, so we're playing a kind of a progression series. So as we play each scenario, we only unlock the next acts and cards that are available in that kind of campaign. So we're not playing with stuff from the future, uh, from past release, other than the Investigator Starter decks. We put those in the card pool as soon as we got a hold of them. But if we look on today's video or today's live stream you're watching right now, and we'll mute that. Uh, and we'll, oh, look at all these awesome people live chatting. <laughs> um, right down here in the, in the video description, uh, which if it's not expanded, you just hit see more. And uh, maybe you'll see more butts. <laughs> just kidding. Simpsons, anybody? Uh, and I don't want to join YouTube Premium. 
Uh, so you go down here, and I've been trying to put this on our recent videos, and I'll keep expanding it. So if you just are watching a current Arkham Horror video, go down. You're watching this one, obviously, because uh, you wouldn't be hearing me otherwise. Uh, go down to the video description, and you can find our Night of the Zealot campaign, which is a three-scenario campaign from the core set. And then we play through Dunwich. So if you just want to see the core set, Janet, um, just what's involved with... Two we play with two core sets to build the card pool, though. Just keep that in mind. Um, but here's the playlist, and you can see in order... Uh, our live playthroughs we did, and you can turn on the live chat and see what was being said as we played along, and um, all that's there. Uh, but again, you can jump to the playlist section also. Uh, you should be able to find lots of stuff in there. Uh-oh. Don't play, don't play. Or, okay, it was muted. Uh, but you can always, if you're watching this, just go click on Rob's Gaming Table and tell YouTube to stop asking you to join. Or just join. <laughs> and then go to the playlist section and you can find our Arkham Horror stuff in there and a lot of other campaigns we played through legacy games other games but I did separate it out by uh campaign campaign expansions uh or campaign series and then I'm going to put our standalone stuff uh in its own separate so when we play just a standalone scenario uh I'm going to put them in this Arkham Horror LCG scenario packs playlist so if we play like the murder at the hotel one or whatever, just by mm -hmm. itself or Arkham Horror or whatever, uh, we'll just put them in this separate playlist. So they're not going to be, unless they're a side scenario thing, then we'll just, we'll keep them in the same campaign. So that's, that's the plan. All right. Joel says, oh my, uh, oh man, you guys are going to hate Forgotten Age, 100 times worse than Carcosa. Oh no. Okay, a lot of people have been warning us about this. I've been seeing messages, private messages on here, Facebook, uh, comments on Twitter posts about the votes and stuff. People are commenting, saying like, it is hard, it is unforgiving, it is not nice to new players, it's not nice to the blind playthrough. Uh, there was recommendations I saw in our Discord saying we should probably play on easy, which we are going to play on easy. Uh, or whatever it's called, yeah, easy, which will change with the bag a little bit. So for Forgotten Age, for the first playthrough, we're going to play on easy. Supposedly that still doesn't make it much easier, but we're just going to do it. Uh, and Forgotten Age, yes, Yogi's saying it's good. Nobody said it's not good. Nobody said it's going it, to, the campaign sucks, like you're not going to have fun, but it, people are just saying it's really hard and unforgiving and when playing blind yeah and some, some annoying things kind of happen in it and i think you can probably die worse than carcosa and like end your whole campaign oh, a lot easier so it may be only a three episode campaign like which is fine i'm fine that's fine i'm that, okay with that yeah no worries we'll just move on to the next campaign yeah. don't care <laughs> and so we don't play with a few packs we have we'll play with them in the future we'll try the campaign again or we'll play return two in the future and throw them in i don't know um, but we pulled the player cards out of there, so I, I like I really don't care if we play all the scenarios or not. Um, yeah, I like I'm okay in this game, and I'm I kind of want them to do more of is the branching path stuff. I know I think they like kind of avoided that so far because they they don't want people just to buy cards and never use them because they keep skipping campaigns and stuff. But like, there's people out there that can't get all the packs for a campaign and have to skip scenarios anyway to play the campaigns they have because they're waiting on one pack to come in stock. I've seen this thing described online. Sounds like torture, but there are people that do that. So uh, I'm okay if like we're playing the game and we just skip a campaign or skip a scenario, or we end up don't seeing the last three scenarios, or even the last one like in Carcosa. I don't not losing sleep over not seeing that last Carcosa uh, scenario. So yeah, because then when we do play through again, it'll if, be we may never see that. Well, campaign. Yeah, we may never, we never see it. May never see that scenario, yeah. and and I just don't care. That's totally fine. Yeah. It could be the best scenario in the whole game. Don't care. Yeah. I really don't care. I have way too many games to play, too many awesome gaming, great experiences to play. It's just one scenario. Like, I've played so many scenarios in Lord of the Rings LCG. They started, like, blending together and, you know, started to feel the same and that kind of thing. So, it's all good. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't worry about it. It's just another scenario in a giant box of cards. Uh, so, if we miss half a campaign, same deal. <laughs> same deal. Uh, it's all good. All right. There's not enough Arkham file games. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, there's not. Oh, there is. Yeah, Sajat, you can vote on that poll, even if you don't know what's good. Just literally go vote on a deck name uh, that you think sounds funny or clever or whatever. Uh, just go vote. I dropped it in the chat again. But yeah, feel free, whoever wants to vote on our decks for playing, 
If you don't know this game well enough and you just want to have some fun and impact what deck we play, I don't care if you're voting on something that has the funniest name but is the worst deck and will give us trouble and make my time worse uh, by losing and getting frustrated. I don't care. That's all good. We can have some fun with it. Uh, I'm leaving it up to you guys. So, uh, yeah, you guys can totally mess up our sacred first blind playthrough of Forgotten <laughs> Age. I'm okay with that. I, I think it's it's awesome. It's part of the advantage and like the fact that we can do stuff like this, playing it live with everybody uh through like youtube live streaming i just like I, I think it's awesome like why not do it yeah and let you guys mess with our stuff i i think or help us out and feel invested in it yeah 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 just right? play like a way to play along and feel yeah. involved yeah, yeah it's like well like i don't want to just post edited playthroughs that are so boring like yeah we played through the game already here's our edited playthrough we will do that eventually i'm sure but uh yeah i love the blind playthrough just having people get involved and like enjoying it with us or yeah. goofing around with us or whatever uh so mike's asking uh rob for larkham horror tcg do you know which size the sleeves fit best they're just standard um so ffg sleeves don't seem to exist uh because they've rebranded so um asmodee purchased a company called game genic and they focus on sleeves deck boxes and accessories so since asmodee purchased a whole bunch of studios to focus on specific um segments of the market or industry or whatever uh, Game Genic is now the company under Asmodee that is now making high quality uh, sleeves, deck boxes, all those things you used to buy from FFG have all been moved over to Game Genic, and Game Genic handles that. So if you're looking for official art sleeves for some FFG game, uh, those will come through Game Genic now, uh, which will also make official stuff for any Asmodee uh, studio like Catan Studio, Z Man Games, all that stuff. All comes from Game Genic. So yeah. It's good stuff. I bought a lot of the new Game Genic stuff at the Gen Con when they announced it all and had key forward sleeves, mm -hmm. deck box, all that stuff. Yep. Uh, it I think was, you bought one of everything. Yeah, it was all like high quality, awesome yep. stuff. Like it, it, I bought tons of different co companies of sleeves and deck boxes and things, and they definitely it's like it is a premium thing, uh, which the price may reflect that. But uh, but yeah, we use Dragon Shields mainly, but just standard size. Don't buy the mini like Yu Gi Oh sleeves or whatever or any of that stuff. Uh, just standard size card sleeves, so stuff you'd use on Magic the Gathering or or Pokemon cards or whatever. Uh, that stuff all works on Arkham Horror cards. They're just standard size. So you can buy like any brand, Ultra Pro. You can get cheap Ultra Pro sleeves or uh, guard. Uh, what is it? Ultimate Guard or any any of these other companies that make sleeves or I don't I don't know if Ultimate Guard makes sleeves, but make boxes and stuff. Yeah, so so many so many options. Just standard cards, and the reason like you'll find so many companies that make those size cards is because Magic the Gathering, right? Everyone's trying to sleeve their Magic cards, so lots of options, lots of options. Gigi says, "Sorry, I voted for the decks with the best sounding names." No, I, that's no, perfect. I said that was part that's of it. Perfect. I said that was part of it. Yeah. Come up with your your description or your clever name, and people might vote on it just based on how you describe the deck. Because new players are going to be voting on our Forgotten Age decks. So I, I knew that was a thing because I know there's a lot of people watching our playthrough series who are new to the game like us and just having fun watching us play along and discover the game and deciding if it's like something for them or something they want to do in the future. Mm -hmm. So And some people will never play it. They just want to watch us play along and have fun with a game that they don't want to invest in because uh, it is a lifestyle game. It's expensive. There's a lot of rules and things to keep in mind. A lot of card interactions and stuff to, to experience and some people don't want to do that. But they love watching me get frustrated doing it. So... Uh, yeah, so go vote on the decks based on the descriptions of the deck or the deck name. Go nuts. That's all good. And Wordna says, hello from Switzerland. Good luck against the wolf. Yes, thank yes, you. Thank we, you. We will need it. Thank you. Uh, the game genic sleeves. Yes. So here's the other thing. If you sleeve. Yeah, I, sorry, Buell. I thought that was like understood when saying it's a different company making sleeves. Even the same company making its own sleeves pack to pack sometimes can be slightly different cuts or sizes that's a known thing in the industry it's never perfect especially we see between large print runs of sleeves sometimes they have to switch factories or manufacturers or certain plastics aren't in stock or whatever or something happens at the factory or they change some process or a machine gets switched out or something uh that is a normal thing between the same company that sleeves are not always 100 percent accurate i've seen that with the most expensive sleeves where i bought two boxes uh, maybe like six months apart of the exact same color and everything put them side by side and notice one pack is slightly taller sleeves than the other pack so you can't really mix those together unless you just don't care uh, but obviously i wouldn't take them to a tournament like that uh, but yes ffg sleeves uh were manufactured somewhere different and different settings and everything 
than Gamegenic. Gamegenic is a completely different company in a completely different country making completely different sleeves. But if you're looking, if you're wondering why FFG doesn't sell sleeves, it's because Gamegenic now sells sleeves. But they're not 100% compatible. There is a company that is trying to make FFG compatible sleeves and they had a uh, Kickstarter. Uh, Sleeve Kings? Is it Sleeve Kings? Anyone, anyone know of Sleeve that Kings? That sounds familiar. Yeah, I think it was them. I'll try to bring it up on the screen. I, the Kickstarter might already be done. I was debating doing it because I have a bunch of those. Um, FFG sleeves? Yes, here we go. Oh, Yogi wants us to play. Oh, well, I'm going to take extra long then. We're going to read every single word in this whole Kickstarter before we start. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so Sleeve Kings, they make premium sleeves. Their sleeves are pretty trash. They're basic ones. They're not the greatest sleeves ever. They kind of suck. But these guys make, they make premium version of their sleeves, which are better. I've used both. Their, their premium sleeves or their more expensive sleeves are better, obviously. Um, but they are good for getting cheap, large quantities of sleeves. They do Kickstarters every now and then. I've never done a Kickstarter through them. But just looking at the price and the quantity and the way they make packages for specific games is pretty crazy. But a lot of people like me, I used to buy only FFG sleeves. I still have some unopened packs. And if you're sleeving entire card pools for an LCG and the game keeps growing, you want to make sure all your sleeves are identical. And all of a sudden, if your company stops making sleeves that you've been buying thousands of, and all of a sudden you need 100 more because a new pack came out, and that company stops selling those sleeves, now you have to start sleeving your whole collection of something new or else the sleeves aren't going to match. So because of that problem, uh, Imperial Publishing, or Sleeve Kings here, uh, decided to do a Kickstarter, and I'm sure they'll sell these after the fact, but if you have FFG sleeves and you need more, some have broken, or you have a collection that's growing, or you bought an expansion for a game that you have completely sleeved in FFG sleeves, and you bought an expansion for a board game that's going to have more of the same size cards going in the same decks, you might want FFG sleeves. So what they did was they... Basically tried to reverse engineer. Okay, they have late pledges. No. Oh. They tried to reverse engineer all of the FFG sleeve line. So supposedly these sleeves are going to be the exact same thickness, exact same quality. They have tested them with people. They have sent both FFG sleeves and these sleeves to people. See if they could see the difference. They had beta testers and stuff supposedly involved to try to like, tell me if you can tell the difference. And supposedly nobody could. So if you just need more of the same sleeves, Mike, for example, and you're like, damn it, I've been sleeving my Arkham Horror collection in only FFG sleeves, and now they don't exist anymore, this is your answer to get exactly the same sleeves. If you need to keep buying the same sleeves. Otherwise, you can't get them anywhere else. There you go. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so hopefully this helps somebody out. If you're sleeving with FFG sleeves and you can't find them for your board game, all, all of them are here. And you can buy, you can back them in large quantities, smaller quantities. You'll save money, obviously, the more you buy. And uh, they pretty, they have friendly shipping and everything. So Keep going to check it out. So yeah, yeah, hopefully this helps somebody. I forgot to mention this before when this was on Kickstarter. I was debating doing it because I have some unopened packs, just like one pack of the yellow. I have a couple packs of the red that I use like for Gloomhaven. I use the little red sleeves. Uh, and then I bought another brand, and I realized like they're a different size. So I have to, I have to sleeve like Kyle's. Bloomhaven deck of um, cards, uh, the um, like the modifier deck. Yeah, attack modifier deck. Uh, I have to sleeve like, and 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 we were playing uh, Lord of the Rings: Dreams of Middle Earth. I had different sleeves than you guys had because oh. I didn't have enough to sleeve all of our decks. So I was using a different company sleeves only for sleeving my own stuff. So I had to keep my own. So little... it wasn't mixed in with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to keep my own little pack of of third party sleeves or whatever just in my deck box with my cards so that I kept it all together because once I put them back in the original decks I have to unsleeve those so they don't get mixed into your decks and then the sleeves are a different size so yeah hmm. so well this it, is late so we could still get in on this yeah. if we need to for, like, I, I'm, okay. I, I'm okay I'm okay because if I just don't I, I'll just save my unopened packs to, as replacements if sleeves ever break yeah. on the existing games I have sleeved with FFG stuff I just knew when I when they announced Game Genic, I knew it was going to happen that FFG is going to stop making their own product because it's like why would Asmodee they have two two things competing with each other? Yeah. Um, so I stopped buying FFG sleeves as soon as Game Genic was announced as being a purchase by Asmodee and a studio that was created or whatever. Uh, I knew to not buy FFG sleeves, do not invest in them, find a third party brand. Uh, so I do have some leftover packs, but I'll just use those as replacements. 
But again, if you are like die hard and love the FFG sleeves and have so many games sleeved and have spare packs lying around that aren't enough to sleeve a new game, there you go. And I'm not sponsored by Sleeve Kings, uh, but Sleeve Kings, if you want to send, send me a bunch of stuff, uh, <laughs> just just email me robsgamingtable at gmail.com. <laughs> just kidding. But anyways, uh, yeah. <sighs> okay. So yes. Well, that's awesome, Mike. I hope that helps you out. Uh, let's see. Anyways, all right. Oh, game genetic sleeves are hard to find in Europe. Oh. Maybe they're doing well, or they're just having trouble printing them during COVID, maybe. Because remember, like, every every manufacturing sector has been hit by COVID delays and companies trying to catch up because of, like, manufacturing delays. So maybe game genetics waiting in line Well, you know, maybe they use the same factory that prints sleeves for Dragon Shields or something, and maybe Dragon Shields does bigger orders. So game genetics smaller probably has to wait to get their stuff through the same factories. You never, you never know, right? You never know. But maybe that's causing a delay to their stuff. Um. <laughs> uh, much demand. Yeah, it maybe it might be too much demand. Yeah, yeah, that would make sense yeah. too. That would make sense too. But I bet it's a bit of both. Uh, word now. I bet it's like supply. You know, is not enough right now, and demand's high. It's happening with like every industry right now. Nobody can make enough stuff, and everyone wants certain things right now. Because you know what happens when delays happen. All right, let's play Curse of the Rougarou. Curse of the Rougarou. Um, okay. All right. So uh, anyone who doesn't know the Investigator starter decks, they come with this cool little sheet which describes what you're kind of doing with the base deck. And it also includes how you might want to upgrade it with cards that are in here. And I freaking love this. Even a little FAQ on, like, you know, how some weird card might work that a new player might be confused about. Oh, I don't have an FAQ. Well, your cards are more straightforward, obviously. Yep. Uh, but I love that this exists for a new player. I, I love it. A little story, too. Like, a little backstory on Nathaniel. I didn't read that. I should, probably. Um, but, yeah, it even explains how to use the expansion, what you're trying to do. I just love it that, like, you could be playing, you know, in a different world where you play weekly at a, a board game store or a board game cafe. In theory, if these were ever on, in stock on a shelf and, you know, COVID rules and stuff were, were kind of out of the way, uh, you could be playing, like, two players. Mel and I could show up at a local board game cafe, start playing every Thursday night or something, and a player could come over our shoulder, which has happened many times we've been playing games in general. It's just a normal thing, you know. Someone walks up to the table and goes, ooh, what's, what's this? What, what's, what's this you got here? And you go, ooh, this is my chance to rope in a new player. <laughs> Pulling a new sucker to the play group. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you could just be like, oh, uh, yeah, see those packs over there? Or they could go ask the, the, the clerk at the store, you know, like, what's that game they're playing? What do I want to play? And, uh, yeah, you can be like, go buy this pack. And you can sit down at the table with us, read this. Kind of explains how it works. I'll show you how the game works quick. And then, you know, within, you know, 30 minutes-ish, we can start the game kind of idea. Yeah. Um, you would hope. And then they can go read this later too if they want to like figure out how to upgrade the deck and they show up next week. You know, they can go read this before the next session and come back with Nathaniel or whoever, Stella. And uh, yeah, I think I think it's really clever. Really good product. I, I can't recommend them enough. Um, I, think, I think it's a great idea. I wish this existed for the game earlier because uh, it might have got us to get into the game and try the game earlier maybe. Because there were many times I went to a Keyforge tournament and we're waiting for it to start or a board game night at our local game stores and friends of ours are playing at the next table playing Arkham Horror and they say, you want to play? And we'll just whip a deck together quick. And I went, ah, no, no, no. Like, I'm not going to pay for that trouble. But man, if they could have just handed me a pack and been like, here, decks already built and like ready to go. I know you can build your own decks and do this too, but uh, just this quick product, I would even have just gone to the shelf and bought the product to play with them. And, and you're in. Like, you could just join in someone's campaign at your local board game store or your friend's house or whatever uh, for so cheap. And I think it's great. I just wish they did this for even their competitive LCGs a lot earlier. Like those Thrones ones came way too late. Way too late. And they came with restricted cards in them already. You couldn't play at tournaments, which was also stupid. Um, but yeah. All right. Uh, Frederick, tell Frederick is asking if this is Young Rob on the card. On the character card. Are you sure it's that card? Or is he talking about this card? <laughs> is, is this one you're talking about? <laughs> Is the young Rob? I I don't know. 
I don't know. I, I don't know if, uh, yeah, like, I don't think I looked like that when I was this age, but, uh, yeah, maybe in my teen years, maybe, but, uh. <laughs> oh, the rug room. <laughs> oh, this, oh, this one? Yeah, yeah, this one makes more sense. This one makes more sense. Yeah, that does look like a younger me. When, yeah, especially when I don't shave. Yeah, sometimes I look like that. <laughs> you decide. <laughs> you decide. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh that is the best <laughs> okay sorry what did you want me to do uh i don't know i described nathaniel you played a little bit with stella yesterday you tried her out yeah uh, i read through the you, cards yeah. and stuff and um one of the big thing thoughts i had after looking at stella's deck and i said it to rob this morning this deck feels like it's up my alley because anybody who's watched all the way through knows i take risks on um tests maybe i shouldn't and this deck supports that. If you fail, good things potentially happen or your turn gets better going forward. So I like this deck for that reason that if you pass, you pass. And that's great if you take those chances. And if you fail, maybe it's not so bad. I like that, which is very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very it's a different survivor deck. thing. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And I like it a lot. So. Yeah, I like these little decks they put together. Yeah. They seem cool. I, I want to try that one. After seeing you play with it, I was like, yeah, I want to play with some of those cards I've never seen before. Some of the cards, looking at them, you'll recognize because some of the cards were in the deck yeah, that Rob I played, with, played with, already, like the but... Granny Orn and the Raven and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then some of the cards like Lucky and Look What I Found, all of those cards we're familiar with. But there is some new cards that are there very is no lucky. There is no Lucky in that deck, in the base deck. I upgraded Lucky. You do now... Sorry, spoiler. Yeah, yeah. You do now have, but Lucky doesn't come by default. Yeah. But again, we're doing the standalone rules. Uh, yeah. We're going to spend nine experience. Uh, and you can talk about what upgrades you did there, Mel, what you took out, what you put in while yeah. I look for those rules. So I guess the first things that we did, or that I did, was I upgraded, well, we'll do one at a time, I guess. So I upgraded the Granny Orn um, from one of them. Uh, as we as we've seen so that gives me the plus one intellect which is good and then um, a little bit of a different text on here when an investigator your location would fail a skill test exhaust granny or and that investigator either gets plus one value or minus one value for that test we upgraded one of those so that's gone uh, upgraded one look what I found um, so this one is now if you fail by two or more, sorry, fail by two or less, uh, discover two clues at your location or connecting location, which is huge. I really like that. We upgraded one of those. Then I'll t I, up I added in obviously the one lucky. So this is fast. If I would fail a test, I get plus three and then I get to draw a card, which is great. And we only did one of those. Um, <laughs> And then I took a <laughs> Cherish Keepsake for a little bit of horror soak um, for the Ravens, um, for the scenario itself. She does have eight health and eight um, sanity, which is great. Mm -hmm. That is huge. My favorite stats, but eight and eight in, when in an Arkham game. Yeah, but when you're giving yourself horror on cards, uh, I just wanted to have a little bit more of a buffer. So we put one Cherish Keepsake in, and I am removing, first I'm removing one. I have two of these scrapper cards, so I'm removing one of them. Um, just lets me spend money, uh, resources for stats. And I took out one dumb luck. Uh, this is uh, after you fail a test by two or less during an evasion attempt of a non-elite monster. Place it back on top of the encounter deck. Eh. Yeah, that was just my thought. So these are upgrades that I made by myself. I don't know. If they're good or they're not. They're trash. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> More lucky. More was lucky. Even, garbage. Was there even an option? No, don't change it. No, no, don't no. Change I'm it. not changing it because I've made my decision. <laughs> but I'm just seeing if there was even another lucky in this deck. Yeah, you get two of everything in there. Oh, you do? Yeah, they give you a full play set. So even if people buy these boxes who don't care about playing oh, the new stuff, okay. it just gives you more stuff for your collection. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. like a full play set of everything. It's very well done. If they started giving you copies of one ofs of certain cards in these packs, I'd be losing my mind right now. Just like when they don't include the bags and, and inserts in their <laughs> FFG games or decent cardboard to hold the cards that you open, you know, anything. Uh, so yeah. just a quick, this is my points, three, six, seven, eight, nine. That's my nine XP that I have spent. Yes. 
Yeah, Sajat Knowles, the infamous Mel is talking. Rob tries not to laugh at chat. Shows face up again. Face shows up again. Yes, hundred oh, percent. That happens to me too. Though. Yeah, yeah, you do too. Where you're giggling and I'm like trying to like still remember my thought and I'm like stop, stop. Uh, but I noticed Kate said something. Oh, I missed uh, it. Where'd it go? Kate says fail to win. So they're talking about uh, Stella possibly yeah. winning by failing. Yeah. Uh, which reminds Kate from something from another LCG, which to me I'm, I'm assuming we're on the same page. But what I'm remembering is good old first edition Game of Thrones, the living card game, House Martell. Martell? I oh, yeah, yeah. freaking love that lose to win mechanic in there. In second edition, it was not as good. Uh, but first edition, House Martell was my favorite. Nothing like building decks and driving eight hours, going to Gen Con, playing in 12 plus hour long. No, definitely longer than 12 hours. Yeah. Like we started some of those tournaments like. Overnight. No, As some well. of those tournaments, I know, we were playing at like ni at 9 a.m. We got to the tournament area at 8.30, and we were literally playing until like 1 in the morning yeah, if, yeah, yeah. if I made the cut. Yeah. Uh, or 2 in the morning sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember these are super long days. But man, I love taking House Martel decks to tournaments. You drive all that way, and you're just like losing on purpose everything in the game, which should make me more understanding and accepting of doing that in this game. But uh, I, I don't know. Something that doesn't do it. Maybe you need to play this deck. But yeah, I just love you uh, playing House Martell and just trapping players and just like making them so frustrated. They come at you with everything they got, and you just like throw it back in their face and and, and you just out dance them in the in the game. I think oh, so good. Yeah, I miss those days. Miss those days. Uh, Definitely. I, I tried to make House Martell version uh, for 2.0 as best as I could. It wasn't the same though. But yeah, it it wasn't. Um, I even tried influencing behind the scenes to, to do it, but it didn't work. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I didn't play Martel too much in second edition. But Kristen's I'm, here. Hello. 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 I'm very excited for this because my risky nature in this game may pay off. We'll see. Yep. All right. Uh, so the upgrades I did, I took out uh, two Relentless. I just feel like this card's way too slow. It's about like uh, dealing excess damage, which I don't know if I'll do that often. I don't feel like Nathaniel does that too often, um, at least in my experience with him so far, and just based on looking at the cards in his deck. Maybe if you built a deck around doing this, it could be cool, but I just feel like by default it's not. Uh, and then later you can discard this to gain all the resources on it, um, based on all the damage stored on here. So it's like you're doing excess damage in the game, so you're wasting effects to generate excess damage. How many monsters? I don't know in Roguru with the boss monster. I'm not going to be doing excess damage to him. Um... So it's, it's like you want to get this early, get into the play, start extra damaging guys, storing the damage on here, then later you discard this to get a bunch of resources. I don't really care about that. I think it's too slow. I don't care. I can see that being used in a deck in the future. It'd be really cool. In a cool. campaign, full campaign maybe. Maybe, yeah. It'd be neat. It's a neat card. Like I, I like car cards in games that do that to give players who like that, you know, the build up and the, the cool effects. It's interesting. Just not my play style at all. Uh, and then the boxing gloves, I took these two out because I upgraded them uh, as recommended in the, the deck upgrade sheet. So the boxing gloves are like the only weapon in their key to Nathaniel, uh, who is a boxer. So they give plus two while fighting instead of plus one. Uh, and then you can, after you defeat an enemy, you can exhaust your gloves. You can only equip one at a time. They're two, uh, two hand slot, but you hope to at least find one, get into play, uh, cost less. Gives you extra for fighting, and it can search the top nine cards instead of the top six. Try to find a spirit event, and remember, Nathaniel's all about events. So if I can find spirit events, uh, I can get combos going and that kind of thing. Um, and then I also uh, the two other cards I put in. I just want to try these out. I I have played evidence before, but this is, they, he doesn't come with the default evidence, but he does have a level one evidence. So I put one of those in just to maybe help me grab a clue because I remember you needed clues to like. Uh, fight or engage the rogue or whatever so I kind of want a way to do that if I'm not near Mel I know Mel can get clues or sorry not if I'm not near you because you can spend clues to let me fight the rogue yeah but uh, or engage him but just if you're having trouble with an enemy or something you can't get a clue and I'm like I'm at the rogue Mel I need a clue <laughs> like waiting maybe I can f go fight an enemy get a clue quick and then and then deal with the guy if, you know if if we need uh, and then this other card looks interesting. I just want to try it out. I like the stats along the side. I like the stats along the side. Uh, lesson learned. Fast play after you take damage from an enemy attack. Discover two clues at your location. So in those times when I'm like having trouble, I, I can't get this defeat an enemy crap to happen. Uh, this way, if just an enemy, even the Roguru attacks me, uh, I can get two clues from my location. So I kind of wanted like both situations kind of covered. 
So, and I didn't want to go over the nine experience. Otherwise, I would have took two copies of each of these cards. Uh, but just, they also have a way to help me get clues generally on investigation tests. I could just spend them as skill cards if I need to. So, uh, that's just the upgrades I did. Nothing crazy and fancy. I did try before I was playing around with him. I did the upgraded, like, get over here. I did the upgraded counter punch. Counter punch is, oh my god, I love that card. Um, but yeah, uh, I didn't, I didn't do those. I'm just playing with the default of those, but, uh, uh, yeah, well, that, that's what I did. Well, that's the Nathaniel deck I'm playing with. It's the standard deck. Made those changes. Same with Stella. We just made basic changes using nine experience. Uh, from the standalone mode. So standalone mode here, uh, this is from the rules reference. When playing standalone mode, you can play any scenario in the whole game. So if you're waiting on your whole campaign pack to deliver, you could technically just play a single scenario. And yes, they have stupid rules about going through each scenario in the PDF online and reading resolutions, spoiling stuff for yourself, uh, gaining experience, doing all this stuff, writing on your campaign log. So if you're trying to play like scenario seven or eight of a campaign, the amount of work you'd have to go through all this stuff to like set yourself up to play is like, uh, it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. But I understand it was really designed with campaign play. They want to make it so when you're reading that scenario and it says, check your campaign log. If you did this and this, you get this advantage or this disadvantage. Yeah. But I say just play the way that it also recommends here is just who cares about any of that. Just set up the scenario, do, roll a die to pick your setup and, and just do it quicker to get into a, a scenario. But the cool part is these standalone packs are made to just be quick and dirty to play, uh, to get set up and get into. There's no, you don't need to have come from a campaign or whatever um, at all. It, it, I mean, there's a little bit in there, but it doesn't matter at all. Um, but this uh, is what we did. So you can upgrade your deck. Uh, we put one basic weakness in. We did the random basic weakness. It's not random. We just use the one that comes in the investigator pack. It even gives you a weakness to throw in your deck, which is pretty cool. So we just each did the basic one. Um, and, and we did the 0 to 9 experience, and you don't add any additional basic weaknesses. But if we want to do up to like 19 experience, we'd each have to add in an additional weakness. Like, I could do this and you don't have to. Mm -hmm. I debated it, man. When I started I reading know, some... I know, one is not terrible. I but... know, but... Yeah, then, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can go up to like, you know, 49 experience and add four random basic weaknesses in and really beef up your deck, which I think is a cool option. I'll, I want to try that one time. It just go crazy, but I mean, I feel like in the last campaign, campaign, our decks had like three or four weaknesses in them. Oh, by the end of a campaign, it yeah. gets silly. Yeah. yeah, so it probably and, is and, about that. And that's what it's simulating. It's yeah. simulating like you went through the campaign, you earned some experience, you ratchet up the difficulty, but we'll give you some weaknesses to balance it out. Yeah. It makes sense. Um, and it talks about don't playing a trauma, and if scenario weakness or an asset is earned, uh, you don't own. Simply continue without the card. So, like, it just, it gives you rules on how to play any kind of scenario standalone. Um, but the roguery, you'd have to refer to that. Okay. Shuffle up a bit more here. Oh, you know what? I don't have the main book. Do you have your books? We don't need them. Why okay. do we need them? Because I just always go through them for setup, but... Eh, who cares? I oh, don't okay. care about setup. You guys know this already. <laughs> just make sure we have everything done. I don't care the order, really, but uh all right okay so we have to pick like our uh lead investigator oh yes that that, that could matter that, i know yeah. that matters so odds even yep so it's odds. odds i am lead investigator you are lead investigator interesting it might be bad okay Prepare. all right do we want to do we do our hand and everything sure we let's all that? let's let's do our hands let's draw some cards do some mulligans I got a vicious blow, I got a dodge, a clean them out, one-two punch, and evidence. Uh, I don't see boxing gloves, or my brother, Randall Cho, who I know can help me get my boxing gloves. So that's a little scary. Uh, so, I feel like I want to keep a clean them out and an evidence and look, but I'm thinking of dumping it all just to increase my odds of getting boxing gloves. Um... Yeah, I, I think I do. Yeah. Yep, I'm actually going to dump it all. Uh, I'm just going to dump it all. They are agreeing yep. with you. Okay, good. Uh-oh. <gasps> oh. Still no boxing gloves. Still no Randall Cho. Uh-oh. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's, have a, let's, see what, uh -oh. let's see what happens. 
Okay, mine mine actually is uh so we ha definitely have the raven and the cherish keepsake little combo thing. So I think we're gonna keep these for sure. Oh, that's cool. Um, old key ring also helpful for mm. getting clues. This is my job. So the only thing <laughs> I'm I... not getting clues. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I'm missing is um actually I don't really know like. A granny, maybe, to give me a little uh, bit more skill. Yeah, you have to like pop the raven first. Yeah, so I, maybe I just want to. This is such a good card too. Um, she has no skills, but you can commit this to any skill type. And if you fail, the performing investigator draws two cards and gains Ooh, two resources. I would actually. So I'm going to keep, keep that, this yeah, because it if helps I you dig into your yeah. deck. Yeah. Uh, this though, I mean, sure. I, I mean, it could help me if I do get in a jam and I have to fight. Know what else I would be looking for? Maybe a lucky look what I found for some more clues. But it's not. Yeah, maybe I'll just I'll just uh, mulligan this card because I don't need this card. Only five cards. Is it not? Forget. Is it what? more than? Only five cards. Cynthia says. Are we wrong? Are Is we supposed to be drawing more? Yeah, goodness. I forget. I don't have the book. Yeah. We play so we many play so games many that games. I forget. We, yeah, and we, we talk about this all five. the time. This is why I should care about setup. <laughs> Tab? No. Yeah, it should be. Five is correct. Okay, Yogi says five is correct. Okay, okay. Oh my god. We were panicked for a second because I thought... Cynthia, what are you doing to us? <laughs> yeah, 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 you draw five, five okay, cards. Right, okay. okay, wow. Because <laughs> they're like, we played, yeah. Okay, okay. You don't understand though. Since getting into the <laughs> hobby of board gaming, like literally for like last ten years, every time, like I literally played Game of Thrones, the card game. I played that like you know, in tournaments and hosted streams and built decks for people. I've taught many players, and like literally, if I took a break from the game for like a month and played like four or five other games, even other LCGs or anything, I would come back and be like, I don't remember how to set it up or draw a card. Like how many cards do I draw? What's the mulligan rules? Like, trying to remember the mulligan rules, the amount of cards you draw are different in so many... Even similar games are completely different. Yeah. Uh, even editions of the games. You play, like, first edition, second edition of a game, all of a sudden, like, the mulligan rules are different, the, car the, the hand limits are different. Like, yeah, it's very messy. It's hard to remember. Yeah, and we, we were playing uh, Marvel Champions, too, so we were flipping yeah, between yeah, those, yeah. and... Oh, no, yep. no, it's what no problem. What happens when your deck draws out in this game, or that deck draws out, <laughs> or this deck remember. draws out, like... I wish there was a standard in the industry of like, you know, is the, uh, there was a name for every type of mulligan or deck drawing or, or like yeah. the empty deck rule. So people could just be like, oh, this game applies the such and such rule. Oh, that's easy. Okay, no problem. Like, yeah, that's but yeah, funny. it's like every game has their own like freaking set of weird things to do the same thing. I, I don't know. Weird. That yeah. doesn't make sense what I said, but. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to replace Scrapper with a uh, will to survive. Uh, do not reveal chaos token. Okay, that's good on a big test. So we're going to shuffle this one back in. Oh, yes, uh, Cynthia, I hope you're feeling better. Or I, Well, you said you're not feeling better. Aww. Actually, not well today. Yeah, you weren't feeling well yesterday. Oh, either. sorry. I thought you were just joking around. I didn't know. Sorry, Cynthia. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. We didn't mean to. <laughs> I hope you feel better. Oh, okay. I thought you were messing with us or something like on purpose. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I get you. Hard through text to know, right? Okay. <laughs> Trying to get us to say Haster. Even though it doesn't well, matter. it doesn't matter anymore. We don't have to take a horror. Did you keep Scrapper? No. I oh, got. I would have. You would have? Yeah. Just because. I got the... rid of it. And... I, I mean, it's not the best card, but it's like getting it set up early in the game where you have that option to like spend resources to help you out in fights or. Yeah. Or. Uh... But I got a will to survive, so I cannot All pull right. Chaos Token. Which is huge <sighs> on an important test. Okay, so now we can go ahead with the setup of the. Sure. Scenario. All right. Sorry. So, Cur <laughs> Curse of the Roger, everything's contained on these cards. Uh, let's see. There's all the standalone stuff. So this is like read to page 19. Uh, we did just a standard bag. Uh, so, we're playing with just a standard bag. Which is terrible. Which is terrible. Uh, minus fours, two minus fours, two minus threes. There's a minus five, minus six, but there's also two plus ones and three zeros. But there's all the symbols are in there, a couple of each of them, almost. All right. No, we don't care about this. All right. Terror Grips New Orleans. Mini Klein, your contact at the Arkham Advertiser has slipped you a draft of the article over a cup of coffee at Velma's Diner. Ooh, we were at Velma's Diner yesterday. We were. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
It would have gone to print had Doyle Jeffries, the lead editor, not scoffed at the concept. I believe his exact words were, I ain't printing the ravings of some voodoo lunatic and passing it off as news, she explained. From the sly grin spreading across her face, you could tell she smelled a story. The headline was sensationalist. Three killings in nine days was enough to spook a town, sure. But you doubt all of New Orleans is gripped by terror or even knows, that the ki uh, kill knows about the killings. Still, something piqued your interest. Lady Espreet, the voodoo priestess from the article, claimed that a malign, uh, yeah, malign curse had taken route, uh, root in the bayou. Bayou. There's something to this, isn't there? I know that look, Minnie said. You weren't sure if Lady Espreet was right. This rougarou... Wouldn't stop killing at three, that's for sure. But curses, wolf people, how could such things be real? Only one way to find out. You put on your coat and head for the north side station. Hey, we were in north side yesterday at the train station. Set up. Gather all the cards from the following encounter sets. So this, this standalone expansion actually comes with two encounter sets, which is kind of cool. Because one gets set aside, which uh, is right here. Uh, set the curse of the Rogue and counter set aside out of play. Oh, this is the rogue we're going to deal with later. This is an encounter set, so this is out of, out of play. Um, sort each location into four piles by trait. New Orleans, Riverside, Wilderness, and Unhollowed, which I did just sort out. They should be all together still. Okay. So there's three locations in each section. Each section has their own bio location and two other locations that are a surprise. You don't know which one's either one, but the backs are... Like, there's two Wilderness, but they're both not the same on the other side. That I remember. Uh, okay, so we are going to roll. Do you have a die? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, one, two, three, four. And this is the one we're going to set aside. So number three. So this one, uh, Brackish Waters, is not going to be in today's playthrough. So this okay. is getting set aside out of the game. I don't know which one we lost last time, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, it may have been that one. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. So every time you play the standalone scenario, you automatically have a different set of locations you're playing from, which is kind of neat. Okay. Uh, all right. So, um, and then, oh, and then you set the other two out of place. So we need to select another random one. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, and six. So the, this one's in play. These two are set aside. Okay. okay. So they will come into play later. But for now, we're starting in the Forgotten Marsh, uh, is our Bayou Wilderness location. I don't know where we started last time, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it's different. I don't remember much about last time, but uh, so yeah, so we have these three. I know there's more locations coming in and stuff, uh, but we'll just set them up kind of in the middle. Okay, these are also... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So I think they like kind of go like in a triangle, right? Like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm nice and low. Okay, this won't be here. Like that. Then we can connect the other set up here and the other set up here, I think, will okay. work. I don't know. And we start and play at the Bayou location. Okay. Uh, then it says, set aside the following cards out of play. Lady East Street, Bear Trap, and Fishing Net, which are all here out of play. Shuffle the remainder of the counter deck cards to building counter deck. Mel, if you want to shuffle that there while I read our stuff. I think that is... Yeah, that's that. The resolutions are next. So I'll set this out of play. Um, and then I'll read. So we have agenda number one, which five doom will advance it. Creech the creature of the bayou. So after arriving in New Orleans the next day, you start your investigation by asking the locals what they know of the recent killings. As you suspected, most know very little of the incidents. You do manage to find several eyewitnesses who give similar descriptions of the creature. Its lithe, muscular form, lanky arms, and wolf-like visage. A promising start, but if there's any truth to the rumors about this curse, you'll have to talk to Lady Eastbreed herself. And Act 1, which we need two clues in our situation because we're playing two players. To advance this is finding Lady Espreet. According to your contact, Lady Espreet is a voodoo priestess who lives deep within the bayou. Most tend to stay clear of her lonely shack. After all, the bayou can be a dangerous place, even were it not for the recent rash of savage killings. Objective. 
only investigators at a bayou location may spend the requisite numbers of clues as a group to advance. So if you have two clues, you can go to a bayou location and advance it. Or if I have one, you have one, we both have to be at a bayou location to advance it. Okay. Which there's only one bayou location right now. Uh, Yogi says the bottom three cards are probably both gloves and Randall. Knowing oh, my no. luck, yes. That'd yes. be terrible. Yep. Shotgun happened to shotgun. I get. Chainsaw? I got chainsaw. Happened to chainsaw. Playing a deck in any card game. I don't care if the deck is twenty cards or sixty cards or seventy-five, eighty cards. If you have one card in there that your whole deck resolves resolves around revolves around, even if it's one copy, two copies, three copies, whatever, is bad deck. Bad deck building. Bad, bad, bad. I don't. I don't like playing those type of decks. I don't rely. You're relying on that. Um, but yeah. If, if other cards suck because you're missing that one card. In this case, it does make the deck better. I don't think it's so necessary, but that plus fight, I got plus two fight on each of those. Because I upgraded them, I really want those box and gloves. You have a dig. Yeah. So I'm going to spend the first six turns of the game <laughs> drawing out my whole deck. I don't even know if that'll do it. Six times three plus the card draws, six times four. That's no. And I have five out of the deck already. It's 33 cards. No, I need to do like seven turns, eight turns. I, I don't know. Math is, yeah. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> so yes, I'll just be drawing through my deck until I find them. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, Do we get to flip this over? Oh, yes. Let's read this one. So this is the Wilderness Bayou Forgotten Marsh. You awarily eye the web of vines and blackened bog waters before you, and your heart sinks. You long for the comforts of home, and yet you press onward. All right. So it's Forgotten Marsh, Two Shroud, No Clues. Forced, when you leave the Forgotten Marsh, lose two resources. Ugh. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Okay. Um, who's going first? We need two clues, but there is none to be seen anywhere. So there's definitely clues hiding behind mm -hmm. one of these, if not two of these. Um, but to go there, you're going to lose resources. So before moving, we should probably spend money to set up. So I'll just play my boxing. Oh, never mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I can do it. I don't have many assets in my deck. I do have a physical training I can put into play at least, but I think I am going to be drawing until I get something and not leaving this. Look, I don't want to just lose two resources to move, but yeah, I'm just going to play I might three do cards. That. So this is just a setup turn for both of us, I think. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Go so ahead. I'll pay one for the old key ring, which will get two keys on it. I will pay one for the raven. And I'll pay nothing for the Cherished Keepsake. That is one, two, three actions. All right, I'll start my turn off by drawing a card. Oh, no. <laughs> not going to oh, be a no. fun playthrough for me. My deck is laughing at me. Uh, but anyways, Tommy Malloy, Ray, Nathaniel Cho, only Hunter, Forrest. Uh, when Tommy Malloy would take any amount of damage, reduce that amount to one. So he has, that's Hardy, right? Is that Hardy? He's got yeah, Hardy? Yeah, he's got Oh, man. I mean, I can potentially let you draw some cards. Okay. But you got to fail the test. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't want to fail. I'll just, uh, I guess I'm spending a couple actions fighting this guy. I don't know if I should use any cards for that, but I, I don't think I'd want to. Oh, I have, after I defeat an enemy, I could draw some cards. That might help, but... But you gotta defeat this enemy? Yeah, and only have two actions, and he reduces damage down, so... Oh, son of a gun. Oh, I do have Counterpunch, though. So I can fight him twice. Let me fight him twice. So, uh, if you can pass me the bag. It's five on two. If I fail, though, that's what sucks. Yeah, see, hold on, before you draw, because I do have... Oh, yeah, if you have stuff to do. I just have this card. Which I can make may commit to a skill test uh, of any type. Oh, but if might... this test fails, the performer in the performing investigator draws two cards and gains two resources. So, but I'm already but coming, you're already coming at. You would only want to do that if I'm like doing a like two on three or something. I know. I know. Like I'm but doing I do a five on two. The, do... There are minus threes, minus fours, minus fives, know, and minus you, sixes. But in I'm here. gonna play that card, and you won't get it. Oh, and also that's not the only minuses. There's also a minus two, minus four instead of a bio location. So this will tank me. And then the bottom one, the Elder Thing token is a minus four. And the tomb, the tomb or, or tablet, whatever, could uh, reveal a new token and uh, still could fail. So right now you're up two? It's your call. But just I'm up you're, three. You're up three. No, I won't do it if you're up three. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen and I'm going to be mad. 
Final oh, four. Oh no! You would have failed. I'm doing it again. Oh. So yeah, so okay. I fail. Oh, uh, man. So that doesn't help at all. Um, I'm gonna do it again. You're gonna do it again? Yeah, he does two damage a shot. I gotta get rid of this guy. Okay. Uh, I'm fighting again. Okay, let's try. This time you're gonna pass. I know it. Yep, you I know missed your chance. Game. So five on three. Minus two, oh I passed. <laughs> so I just do one damage to him and he <laughs> took me on the damage token. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Should have went with my gut. My gut was... <laughs> okay, I'm done. Okay. Enemies, uh, this guy's going to attack me for two. Oh my if you God. can give me two. Yeah. Uh, and I'll play a counter punch. Fast. Uh, play after an enemy attacks you, even if the attack was cancelled. And then I will attack him back. Five on two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, minus four. Oh my god, no! Yeah, this... The one test that you passed. I, I know, I know. I, Dang, so I, 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 I really to... wanted to let you draw two cards. So yeah, you for the this, this bag is harsh, and I didn't see my gloves. If I had my boxing gloves, it'd be such a different game, but... <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, I have okay. that extra pluses I need, but unfortunately I don't, so. Yeah. <laughs> I probably should open by just playing physical training. That should have been what I did. But I, I was hoping I'd draw into something else. I should have just played physical training looking back. A2 for that. Went to fight him, buffed up my test, you know, and then it, it succeeded a little better. But that's a lot of wasted resources to do that. And I think that's the trap. This guy's all about just wasting your actions. And if you're also wasting resources on top of that, it's even worse. Aaron says it's a classic Arkham regret. Yes. Yep. yep. Exactly. Exactly. I should have exactly. just went with my gut and done it the first time. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Uh, well, I could have committed cards too to help me win the test, but I was just like, eh. I don't know, but you're up three. Yeah. That, that's a good. It, yeah, I know. I know. Number. It's like I don't want to waste. Kate says, your deck is trolling you, Rob. This is a great way to spend my morning. I'm glad I'm making some people happy. <laughs> yeah, because Quip says, I am glad I made popcorn. <laughs> Okay. Oh, uh, okay. So now we reset. Yes. And oh yeah, he would be exhausted. We'll ready up. Yep. Um, Draw. I gotta look what I found. Okay. In a resource. A vicious blow, which again, uh, it, it, it can't help situation. this guy. Yeah, I can't do extra damage on him. It'll still reduce it all to one. Stupid. Uh, I need an extra resource. Oh yeah, sorry, you don't have. Go. Okay. Uh, Doom. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Time. Oh, yeah. I know, I'm lead investigator a lot, I feel. You can be if you want. No, no, we can't trade it. It's random, right? I think. Ripples on the surface. Revelation. Test uh, willpower of three for each point you fail by take one horror. If you're at a bayou location, you cannot commit skill cards to the test. Okay, so I'm at a bayou location. I cannot commit skill cards. I am three on three, but I do have some things if I fail. So we'll look at what happens and then I'll decide. Minus four. Wonderful. So I fail by three. I probably should have just done this one. Okay. Actually, these can't even help me. So I have to take what? I have to take three horror. What did it say? This one is, I probably should have played this, but I didn't think it was that bad. Let's play only during uh, your turn. Don't reveal a chaos token. It's not your turn. Oh, I guess. So yeah, you can't true. Okay. Your turn. And then this one is uh, when I feel a skill test by three or less while investigating, I'm yeah. not. No. So I just take three horror like that. Put it on the uh, bear. Put it on the bear. Wow. wow. Yep, that's harsh. All the fours, minus fours. Oh, uh, drag oh. under, uh, which is a hazard revelation. I'm testing agility of three. This is where you need to use that card because I only have two agility. Uh, yep. Two against three. Minus four. Okay, I put it in my threat area. It says, forced when you leave your current location, take two damage and discard dragged under. Forced at the end of your turn, test agility of three. If you succeed, discard dragged under. Which is going to be so annoying. Um, but that's whatever. Okay. Okay. Our turn. Yes. Oh, okay. Shall um, I just go? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna fight this guy. Unless you want to go first and do stuff, and you're gonna have more cards in your hand and want to help me, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. I will just fight, and I am fighting for five on. 
Yep, five on two. Minus two. Yes. So damage. another damage, please. I will do it again. How many minus fours did you put in, Rob? Whatever it said. <laughs> two of I them, right? two, it's yeah. two in the bag. There's two plus the uh, tablet thing is. Yep. Oh. Tablet does reveal another token if you fail. Until the end of the round, you can't move. Oh, boy. Like I care. Minus six. So I do fail. So I can't move, but I'm going to spend my third action again? to fight this guy again. Thank God he doesn't have retaliator. You'd be dead. It's so annoying. Like, <laughs> like I know that's what he's supposed to be, but it's like, wow. First turn. Zero. Yes, okay. finally. So uh, I got some triggers here. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure. Wow. Do I have, I have something? Where is it? Yeah. So for one, I'm going to play Glory. You know, I deserve it after spending like 38 actions and you spend it. We both spend cards and resources. No, not really. But <laughs> all right. So I'll spend one resource to after I defeat an enemy. So this guy is gone and I will draw uh, two cards. Oh, still no gloves. No, still no gloves. OK, dang it. Uh, and at the end of my turn, I'm going to test uh, for dragged under agility of uh, two. Yep, I'll just do two on three. Minus five. Fail. Okay. I feel like maybe we should pause and adjust the bag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll be right terrible. back. Quick, quick, before they notice, quick, take out all these minus fours. And... Oh, oh, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Uh, Show how many of those bad ones are in your Yeah, hand. yeah, let's make sure. Let's make sure we did that. crazy. Uh, so, yeah, two minus fours, a minus five, minus six. Elder sign, minus three. Minus three, let's double check. It's crazy. Yeah, when I was setting it up, I was like, uh, this is the standard? And they don't even have easy. <laughs> I know you can just modify it, but... Yeah, there's supposed to be two minus fours, minus five, minus six, minus threes, plus this at one elder thing's a minus four. Uh, the the what is it? The skulls are technically at a bio location. They're minus four. So yeah, there's a lot of negatives in here. I feel like like a lot. Yeah, yeah. The bag is gonna kill us. Uh, but yeah, we're <laughs> we're definitely in trouble, which is why I need that extra fight off the gloves and stuff. Like I, I yeah, I just need that. Yeah. Well, Stella does say. This is called the Curse of the Rogaroo, not Happy Fun Times with the Rogaroo. Aww. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are not the playing wrong Happy Fun Times. <laughs> you sent us the wrong pack. That's the one I wanted. <laughs> yeah, we wanted Happy Fun Times. But That's we got the one I curse. wanted. You screwed us. <laughs> screwed us. <laughs> okay. Are you done? Uh, yes. Okay. Dang, if I move, I'm going to lose two resources. <laughs> this is so frustrating. Let's switch but... to easy mode. There is no easy mode. And we can just take out the minus fours, fives, and sixes. Yeah, I, I yeah. I, I mean, we've drawn them enough. It should be fair. Um, but I thought you were about losing and winning, so failing tests is going to help us win, right? Me, no? not you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to move. I'm going to lose two resources when I move. That's hurtful, but okay. I don't know which side to go on. Uh, if I go with my gut, I'm going to this side. We got the Twisted Underbrush. It is three shroud, one clue per investigator. Gain two resources as an action and take a horror. Okay. Now, first thing I notice is the card has Victory 1 on it. Yeah. A super cool thing about playing standalone, I don't care about Victory 1. So oh, yeah, that's going to be that, different. Yeah. Hopefully I won't make poor decisions that will tank our playthrough because I'm trying to get one extra experience. So yeah. that's nice. Okay, well, I think, I mean, for free, I could just use a raven, and then I could try using the keys. I've only done one action. All. So, yeah, let's use the raven, discard the raven, and take one horror, uh, discover one clue at recreation. And I'll just put the horror on the cherished keepsake, which will kill it, kill the bear, and I discover a clue. Then, I will, for my third action, I will investigate with my keys. Ooh. You succeed, remove a clue. So we don't remove a clue uh, key yet. Uh, so this now is a one shroud on two. Oh, you know what? Sorry, slightly rewind. 
<gasps> Slightly rewind because I have I have something I might be able to use instead. So we'll put that there. We'll put that there because I have the discover two clues at your location with this one. If I can get this one to go off, then I don't need to use the raven yet. So I might as well be efficient if I lose. So we are using the keys though. So this is action two because we rewound. The shroud is one. I have two. Okay, so I am up by one. Oh my god. I wanted to fail that one. Uh huh. <laughs> All right, fine. So then my third action is just what I said about the raven and the bear. Because I wanted to play the other one to get the two clues at once. So then I could have moved. Okay, and then we turn. But we can get a victory. Woo! Yay. <laughs> oh, and I have to lose a key because that went through. Okay. But I do have two key or two clues for this, so monsters, nothing. Nothing. Reset. Ready up cards. Draw. One two punch. We got a granny, but not an upgraded granny. Gain one resource. A regular granny. Doom. Doom. Oh yeah, you draw Me. first. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. Oh, I found a bog gator. This is going to uh, prey on the lowest agility. While the bog gator's at a bayou location, it gets plus two fight and plus two evade. We are not at a bayou location. So that's good. You want to come help me? <laughs> no, he's a two, two, but two, two, two. I could just try to fight him twice, right, but I'll I don't draw have... My card. Oh, come on, man. Oh, no. Dragged under. Uh, agility test. Still have an action. Oh, Ooh. Raven was fast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. But now I have you can get, take, gain two resources, take a horror. You could have drawn a card, gain a resource. Just something. Do something like that's basic. Just Don't draw, move. I'll right just anything. draw a card because, yeah. Uh, live and learn. Have to play a skill card test. Sorry. Play after a skill test you failed ends after resolving the effect. Attempt that test again. You get plus two value for the test. Okay, that might help be helpful if I need to fight this guy. Okay. Sorry, sorry, yes. Okay, so I'm going to test agility. I'm testing two on three ML. If you have a card that I'm not with you. it's all about failing. I'm no, I'm just saying, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Minus six. So it's now in my area. So if I move, I take four damage. Wow. Four damage. I'm already at two out of nine. So I'd be at six out of nine. Uh, this will be a quick scenario. We haven't even seen the roguer yet. Woo! Okay. Um, who's going first? What's happening? Um, I mean, I can just fight this guy, I guess. Yeah, hold on. Maybe I have the get over here. Let me see. Yeah, I could pull him to me, engage him, and attack him and stuff. I mean, if you want something to do. <laughs> I need to draw on my deck and get some boxing gloves, but uh, he is only a two fight. Is, is that an action? Like yes. The get over here is like one action, right? It's, it's, uh, it's an action. I'm spending an action to pay two and, and play an event card. But you get to do all of that engagement, fight him all in yeah, one? Yeah, you saw me do this before. I showed, I showed you this. So you, you yeah. basically engage, fight, choose a non-elite enemy. He's non-elite. Yeah. I pull him to my location. I engage him. And then I get to fight him. Yeah, so I'm saying, I was going to say that so you it's... can potentially do the two digs if you want to like look for your boxing gloves first. Because once you pull him to the bayou, he's actually going to be a four fight. Oh, that's right, right? So, which I'm not ready for, yeah. really. I, I, well, yeah. So you go first and do your turn. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, 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 because if right. you dug and found your boxing gloves. Yeah, maybe. Okay, sure. I'll uh, start my turn and draw. Uh, okay, so I found self-destructive. Put it into play my threat area. When you deal one or more damage to an enemy, take one damage. Okay. I feel like I just need to end my turn and get rid of this. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So my last two actions, uh, we'll get rid of that. End of my turn. I'm going to do two different agility tests here. Uh, hold on. Let me check my cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I still don't have to discard. I mean, I could start throwing away things like Monster Slayer to try to win this agility test. Uh, but I'm okay. I'll, I'll just, for now, just say no. So we'll test on the first dragged under. Plus, plus one. one. You got it. All right. So that one is gone. Okay, we'll test on the second one. Uh, Cultus is... Draw another one, is minus it? Minus two. Oh, minus two. If the Roguru is in your location, reveal another token. Okay, no. Okay, so this one stays with me, and it's your turn. Okay, we're just going to fight the Bog Eater. Um... Hmm... 
Hmm. I guess I can. Okay, so we're going to fight him. I have three on two. We're not at a bayou, so he doesn't get his benefit. I'm going to put in live and learn. So I am four on two. Probably bad. If I fail, I get to do it again with plus two. So four on two. Pass. Very nice. Okay, so we do one damage. That, I don't get to do that again. That's unfortunate. Um, okay, then I guess we're fighting him again, but now we're fighting him three on two. Well, I'm not with you. That's okay. Okay, if I fail, I could tr use my ability to try again. So, I mean, what? That's just what's going to happen. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, minus two, so I fail. Um, I will use my ability. After you fail a test, you may take an additional action during this turn once per round. Okay, so that was action two, but we're going to try action two again. I'm doing it again. Three on two. Ooh. Minus, minus four. four, so we fail, so I get to try one more time. But I probably won't get it. Maybe. Oh, what's this? Plus one. Uh, you may instead choose to automatically fail to heal one damage or harm. But no, no we are no. passing. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. are passing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any damage yeah, or harm yet. Oh, okay. So the one thing oh. I wish uh, with this deck, I, I see you guys joking, like my luck and stuff. Uh, the one misdesign that I feel like they should have done with Nathaniel Cho is maybe like reduce his health by one or something and give him the ability or change his signature card to not go search for a weapon. What they really should have done is made him like Star-Lord from Marvel Champions, where after you've done Mulligan, you search the deck for one copy of Boxing Gloves and add it to your hand. Yeah, that would be cool. Like, if he's so reliant on it, but he still has high fight, though, so it's like, not like he's completely useless, but obviously I'm drawing bad from the deck, and Rogueru has like lots of negatives in there, but... I feel like after playing Star Lord, where you can always grab his gun every time you start, and there's a couple other heroes in that game that uh, you get to like search your deck and grab this, or they have more tools to search. I know you can build your deck better in this game, and I couldn't include that one where you guys were letting me search for a weapon before. Prepare for the worst. That I can see as being a good card in his deck for for that purpose. Um, but yeah, I was only miss here. Oh, okay, oh, where are we at? Uh, that's my turn. Done. Monsters, nothing. Uh, no monsters. So ready. Our card. Got my scrapper back. Flesh Ward. Or that can help me prevent some damage or horror, maybe. It's a little expensive, a little weird. I was going to cut it from the deck, but it, it might help me still. Sometimes with low sanity, I might need that little bit of extra protection. Uh, and uh, then resource need a resource. Needs. Yeah, please. Oh, okay. So Doom. at least I have an asset I can put into play with that. Yeah. Redo out of five. Okay. That's good. Uh, ripples on the surface. Revely. Oh my god. Test a willpower of three. Uh, for each point you fail by, take one horror. If you're at a bio location, you can knock my cards. I am not at a bio location. Okay, so we're doing willpower test. Oh, my only willpower is Granny, which I want to get in play. So I do have the don't draw chaos token, but I'd rather do that on a test that is more significant. Looks like we're just going a three on three test. Okay. Yeah. Once per round. What does round consist of? We're in a new round when we started the Mythos phase. So if I fail, I can take an extra turn. You have an additional action on your turn. Okay. But I take. But it's not your turn yet. You would be taking it. No, later. it says after you fail a test, you may take yeah. an additional action during your turn. This yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted to see if it can. Yeah, we're in a new round. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Minus two. So I take two horror. Right? Uh, yeah, two horror. Hmm. Yeah, Yogi, it was hard for me not to want to modify this deck with just core set cards. I wanted Guts in here, uh, you know, a manual dexterity or unexpected courage or any of that stuff. I would love to just slide in this deck, take out some of these, like, situational cards. But I was like, no, no, I want to play it with just the raw deck and only upgrades from the deck just to try it out once. But yeah, I don't know if I'll ever do it again. It's, <laughs> it's hard, but I'm glad it exists, though. Um, and I think it's really cool. Your encounter. All right, uh, let's see what we get. 
Dragged under? No. Nope. Oh, it's different this time. <laughs> Curse Swamp. Hazard. Revelation. Test willpower of three. For each point you fail by, take one damage. If you're at a Bayou location, you cannot commit cards to the skill test. Three on three. Oh, sorry. I'm also going to trigger my ability because I did fail that test. Okay. So I have an extra action. Uh, minus four because I'm at a Bayou location. All right. For each point I fail by, I take a damage. So I need three damage. Uh, yeah. Oof. Yeah. Our, I don't know. Yeah, our luck like, is... Like, do we just restart? Like, this, this feels I like a know. crazy start. But, I mean, maybe it's meant to do this. But I feel like it's not supposed to be this crazy. Yeah, I don't know. But maybe it is. Okay, I can go first because I have the two clues. Yeah, if you want to do that, sure. Okay, so I will... Action one... Oh, oh, no. Action one, we're putting Granny into play for four. Yeah, like we know what's going to happen when we advance this, right? We start the whole Roguru adventure fun. We hop on the ride and we go. Yeah. There's no turning back. It's up to you, though. Two. Well, unless you want to still set up for another little bit. You want to set up more? I, I don't know what, what to tell you. You you can do it. I I'm, I don't know. You can't wait forever for me to get boxing gloves. Like I I'm just gotta keep keep playing and just do tests that I keep failing and wasting cards and resources on. Like I I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Okay. So we'll spend yeah. the two clues. I'm at the bayou. So only yep. investigators at the bayou may spend the re requisite number of clues to advance two. Okay. Uh, understanding the curse. Finding Lady Eastbreed's shack is no simple endeavor, but eventually you spot the decrepit shanty through the mist. Lady Eastbreed greets you as you enter, not all surprised by your intrusion. She claims that the rogue was once a man, cursed by being known as Shib, Shib, Shub, sorry, Shub Nagurath, uh, into the form of Great Wolf. She believes that she can lift the rogue curse from the bayou, but only if the creature is destroyed. Put the set aside Lady Eastbreed into play at the bayou location. Where is this one? At our location. Uh, oh, we should probably show her, figure out what she does here. Uh, so she has an action on her exhaust Lady Eastbreed to deal her one horror, heal two damage, or gain two resources. Any investigator at Lady Eastbreed's location may activate this ability. Okay, so it's a way to heal damage. Ooh. Oh, horror, right? Or, oh, or no, no or gain oh. resources. No horror. Okay. Uh, okay. And then it says uh, put the set aside Roguru any me into play. Oh no, sorry, sorry. Put into into play each set aside location. So first we'll put into play the New Orleans uh Bayou and its little places. Whatever you wanna that. And then over here we have the unhollowed foul swamp. Bayou and the unhollowed lands. There it's on little bayou triangle of fun. Okay. Uh, and now we put the Roguru, who is a monster creature elite. He's aloof. He has retaliate. As an additional cost for investigators to engage the Roguru, the investigators must spend one clue as a group. Two clues instead if there are three or four investigators. So as anyone can spend a clue from anywhere for the person who's engaging this guy. I had to look that up to make sure. Uh, forest. After the Ruguru takes one per player, so two damage, during a single phase, the lo uh, find the location farthest from all investigators, move the Ruguru one location at a time until it enters that location. He hits for two damage and two horror. Um, man. And where does he have to go? At a non-bayou? Non-bayou location. So we can put him, like, up here, we can put him over here, or we can even put him close to us. If we want to hit them and make them run around the board. I'm just going to run and try to get some clues for you while you try to get your boxing gloves. I don't know, like, what the best call is here, but I don't know. Uh, anyways, uh, then see what's next. Shuffle the encounter discard pile and each encounter card from the Curse of Roguru encounter set into the encounter deck. So here you go. Shuffle them all in. And then as you leave Lady Eastbreed's shack, a terrible sickness courses through you, and you drop to your knees. The lead investigator puts the set-aside Curse of the Ruguru weakness into play in his or her threat area. Uh -oh. I remember this. Yeah, I think this is bad for me. 
Yeah, I got this in my in the campaign. Or uh, revelation put curse of the Rugru into planar threat area forced at the end of your turn. If you have not dealt any damage this turn, take one horror. Well, yeah. yeah, this is terrible. that's very bad for terrible you. Terrible yeah. for me. Yeah, I'm the fighter. Like I could take that, and if I have enemies, at least I could deal some. At least damage. I have Granny now. I got to find the other Granny so that like, she can replace herself when she dies because it's horror, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, so the timer's on. Like, it's, uh, yeah, we only have so many rounds. Yeah. Uh, because you have now a death clock on you. Plus, we have the doom clock here, of course. And we have this guy that will start eating us alive, I'm sure. Uh, okay. And then on the next card, the next that was act. That for that one? Okay. Uh, yep. Okay. So, hunting the Rougarou now uh, is act 2A. The Rougarou is somewhere within the vast bayou. You must track it down and destroy it, lest the beast's curse consume you as well. Forced. After the Rougarou leaves a location, place one clue from the token bank on that location. Every time he, he leaves, he's going to drop a little clue behind him. Okay. And then objective number one on here says, we have to destroy the beast. If the Rougarou is defeated, read resolution two. So that's how we can end it, by just killing this guy who is a 10 health, 3 fight, 3, agil three uh, evade. And then the other objective on here says, maybe there's another way. While an investigator is engaged with the Rougarou, he or she may choose to advance, limit once per phase. So we know on the other side you like need a doll and some other things or something. I remember from last time, um, but we may be able to do that if we're having trouble trying to defeat him that way uh, by just straight up fighting. We might be able to run around and just collect all the uh, play the scavenger hunt game, but I'm not sure. I, I don't know if we're ready for that either. Yeah, I don't know if we're a good mix. I don't know if that's good at two player to try that way. I don't know, but depends on your investigators and your decks, I guess. But. Okay, well, I still do have two actions because I had the additional action from this. So I move, or I played Granny and I moved. That was free, so I can move again. Yogi, where did I put him last time? I, I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, you say don't put him where we put him last time. Did I put him here last time, or or did Yogi I put? Did I put messing him? with you? No, no, but he might know oh. where I did. I I don't remember. That was so long ago. I I don't, I, and we didn't watch it. I should have probably watched the playthrough. Um, do we put him? Did we put him like far? Farther? I think we would have probably put him far away, not knowing. Yeah. Because I, I know, like, I didn't understand aloof that well, and uh, maybe we were like thinking, like, oh, we'll put him far away because he's gonna come and hunt us down. But he kind of doesn't. He runs away. Oh. So we kind of want to put him close to us, right? I think. I think so. You put him on the left hand side last time at, at, at in the, the bottom, bottom triangle. We put him here. This one. On the left hand side on the bottom triangle. Oh, maybe this one. So we shouldn't put him down here? Should we put him somewhere else? I, I don't know. I, I would think putting him close if you want to go hit him, then he runs around and, and drops clues. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Is close good? I, I think, right? Let me know. Let me know. <laughs> we can't put him in a bayou though, right? It was non-bayou, so we can't put him here or here. We can't put him with us or anything. Oh, okay. Oh, in the mirrored spot of this. In the mirrored spot of this is this. No, it's this. Oh, oh, I see. I, think. I see. Yeah, of the, the same. Like... Yeah, the same. Yeah. Hmm. It's all good. It's all good. Okay, okay. Okay. All right. I have two more actions. I think I'm gonna move to the for sure. So you're going first. No, I'm still in my turn. That was my turn. That. Oh, you're starting. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That was you triggering yeah. the act. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So I'm gonna go here. Wow. First, which. What do we get? We get one shroud, no clues. Uh, as an action, take one damage. You get plus two to your skill value for the next test you make this turn. And force, when you leave the cursed shores, choose and discard a skill card from your hand. Eee, I, have? I don't have many skill cards I don't in my have whole any deck, actually. In my hand. So that's bad. Okay, I don't have any, so I can move one more. Because I have <laughs> asset, event, event. Oh, yeah, if you don't have skill cards, it's not going to punish you, right? No. Yeah, that's so right. So I'm going to move again. Oh, so that's actually good. Because I want to find clues so that when you find your boxing glove, you can fight him. Oh, I have a vicious blow in hand, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we are going to oh, go no. with the gut, and we're going to go here to New Orleans. Nor New Orleans. Uh, to the Garden District. Uh, test uh, agility of seven to try to break into the nearby greenhouse and take a look around. If you succeed, remember that the investigators have found a strange doll. Look at that agility test. Holy. Yeah, seven. I do have. Seven agility. I have four. Oh, now if I can get this into play and get some resources. That's what you want to be doing. If you want to go that route know. of finding the doll, we now know, know the doll's in play. 
I, I remember there was like traps. We set them aside. I know you have to get like a trap or something. Yeah. I don't remember what else. I think clues are related, which is why he runs around and drops clues. So that's how you're going to get clues. Yeah. Um, oh, well, I don't know if I'll do that. I might go here looking for clues. But we can find out if, if one of us engages him, you can just choose to advance and we can see what the goals are. Yeah. But I remember they're hard. And I feel like I remember last time it's like it felt like it's very targeted to four player or three player. Because they're all like very unique skills are kind of focused on all three or four or five requirements, whatever it was. Yeah. And it's really meant to be played at four players as well. I remember at the end of the scenario when we peaked, I remember thinking that was like, oh, if we're not building two player decks that focus on two different aspects of the game, each More very trouble. strongly, we're not going to be able to, it's going to be very tough to do that way. Yeah. But I'm a fighter and one way to win the game I know is just beat the crap out of this guy. True. And maybe that's the route we go, assuming I can get the tools. But if I can't, then it's, that's not going to happen. That's true. Because I know he gets attachments that makes him harder to fight. Yeah. And more health. I remember that. And that's what tanked us last time. We, it just became like undefeatable. Okay, so that's the end of my turn. But I, I did not do damage, so I will put one four on Granny. Okay. Great. All right. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Well, I'm going to do Lady Eastbreed's effect. I'm going to exhaust her, deal her one horror, if you can, please. Yep. And I'm going to heal two damage. So now at three damage. I am going to play... I think I'm going to play a Flesh Ward. It's weird. I don't really want to, but I'm going to play it anyway. You need some charges? Yeah, I just need one more. So four charges. It's got a reaction when you're dealt damage and or horror from an enemy attack. Which I could be attacked by this guy. I know that will happen, I'm sure. Uh, exhaust Flesh Ward and spend one charge. Cancel one damage or horror just dealt from that attack. And it's a place I can put damage or horror one if mm -hmm. like I'm desperate. I, I don't know. I just don't like sitting on so many resources and I keep drawing and I'm doing nothing. And then I'll start discarding cards from hand. Uh, and yeah, and then just got nothing going on. Uh, I think I'm going to put a physical training into play also. For two. Or no, maybe I just draw. How many more weaknesses do I have? That's it, right? That's it. Yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna draw for my last action. Vicious blow, Jeez. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so I'll be discarding cards already, so. Uh, can you put two vicious blows in the same action or just say one person? Yes. No, you can put two. Oh, okay. So, yeah, but we can't engage the rogue group without another clue. No, which I'm- There is zero clues in play. Yeah. So I have time, I think. But who knows? Like, I, I have no idea. Who knows what this is going to do to us? That's I what know. I'm worried about. Okay, end of my turn. Uh, I am going to just test agility. Uh, maybe I can put a card in there. I have a question. I have a question. Let's get a rules debate going in the chat. I'm curious to hear everyone's thoughts on this. And feel free to Google it or look it up or whatever while we're playing. Uh, I couldn't find an answer, but I remember thinking about this one and looking this up. I tried to find this out this morning. Uh, counter punch. Fast. Play after an enemy attacks you, even if that attack was canceled. So if this guy, I know there's cards that let him attack us, even if he's not engaged. Okay, he's aloof. If he attacks me while he's not engaged with me, can I play counter punch and still hit him back? Or I can't because he's aloof and I must be engaged with him to even attack him. I don't know if this counterpunch breaks the rules of aloof based on him fighting us because he obviously can break the rules of engagement by fighting us even if he's not engaged with us. Right. I know he can even break the rules of fighting us when he's not even at our location, which is, drives me nuts. But I, I don't know if I'm allowed to fight him back with a card that also breaks the rules. So I, I don't know. But I, I feel like I should be able to counterpunch him. If he's able to hit me, I feel like thematically I should be able to hit him back. 
But yeah. I feel I, like yes, but again. I, I know. It feels like this should just work. But if it's because he's aloof and you're not engaged, you can't attack, even though this card says he becomes a target of an attack. I, I, I don't know if this overrides that. I'm just curious. I feel like I want to house rule it anyway, even if the answer is no, you're not allowed. Whoops. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Bob says yes. I know, but <laughs> it's Bob. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, yeah, so it's just the whole fast. Play after an enemy attacks you, even if the attack was cancelled, fight. This attack targets the attacking enemy. And then we know aloof. I look up every time we play, but... Uh, aloof says, when an aloof enemy... Uh, sorry, no. An investigator cannot attack an aloof enemy while that enemy is not engaged with an investigator. Though I don't know if this in the rules reference, I would assume it gets overridden by a card effect. But yeah, if it doesn't, that's like the hugest thematic fail. Like, that's the point when the rules just, like, the design of the rules just suck versus coolness of effects, like, of theme and effects of the game, right? Yeah. And card, yeah, exactly. Oh no, card text? No, no, no. Yogi says card text is less than rules. No, but yeah, yeah, oh, okay. I think yeah, you yeah, just okay. used it wrong. <laughs> okay, I get it, I get it. Yeah, it's greater than rules. That's what, yeah, I, yeah that's yeah. what I thought. Okay. And everyone is agreeing with you. Yeah, I would just do it. and But then I look for a second, like, wait a second. He's aloof. Now aloof throws a whole other gamble into it. Yeah. If he wasn't aloof and he was just even attacking me from a different location, I would still hit him. It makes sense. But I just didn't know if, like, aloof is, like, hard and fast. Like, no, no, no. You're not attacking me. I know I could deal him damage through aloof. But this says straight up attack. And then I'm doing a, a strength test, right? Yeah. All right. Okay, so that's I'm good. counter punching him if he hits me, then that's fine. I won't put it into the test. Uh, but I'm going to do this one. So you're three on three? Yep. Uh, no, two on um, two on three. Oh, so you need the plus. Yeah, but I probably won't get it, but whatever, man. Minus four. Okay. All right, so I'm still dragged under. And I'll probably draw another dragged under because you shuffled them back in. So, oh, yeah. yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, Reese. That. Oh, enemy. enemies. No. Nope. No, reset. Okay. Reset. Raw. I got another old key ring, so when this one goes away, we got another one. Evidence. And resource. A uh, resource, please. Uh, okay. Doom. What are we at here? Four. Oh. Spectral mist. Revelation. Attached to a buy location. Limit one per location. Each test, skill test performed at this location gets plus one difficulty. As an action, you can test Intellect of Two to disrupt the source of the mist. If you succeed, discard it. Okay. Um, hmm. Dubai location. Let's do. What well, makes this test harder? Is that what I was doing? What's the That's test? not a test there. No. Any test. It, oh. Plus one difficult. But this isn't a test. You take one damage and you get plus two skill tests for any skills made during this turn. Oh, okay. Oh, it's this one's a test. Sorry. Yeah, but That's yeah, not yeah. about you. I yeah. see. So let's just put on this one. I don't know. I don't want to put on the main one. I don't know. I don't know. There's Swamp. Oh, no. That's, um, well, oh, let me check my hand size, actually. One, two, three, yeah. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I have too many cards. Um, let me get rid of... I guess I'll just get rid of a physical training. No, no, I want to use that. I'll use that for this test, actually. Let me get rid of... Oh, man. So many cool cards that would be awesome later. But, uh... Hmm. But again, none of these work that well without good fight, so... Hmm. Yes, I'll just get rid of a counterpunch. I, I, don't, I want the agility, though. I should have been throwing it in this test, but that was my bad. Um... Yeah, screw it. I'll just throw it away. I don't care. All right. Uh, okay, so I'm testing this. Let's throw in 
Uh, physical training. Some have four. This is uh, take one damage for each fail. Uh, sure, I'll put in a get over here. I don't know. Feels bad throwing away that card, but I, I don't know. Minus three. So three, four, five. Uh, I failed by one, so I take one damage. I, I mean, yep, yep, yep. Okay. All right. Uh, six. Okay. Our turn. Okay. Um, I could go here in search of clues. Don't worry about this right now, unless you think that we need to. Yeah, I can. I can pump. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I could fight the Rogru uh, using just the vicious blows and stuff. That's fine. But it is just nice to be able to play those other events, like things like this, like Monster Slayer, you know, by itself after blowing my Vicious Blows, you know, on the second fight of the game, the third fight of the game, you know, being able to have plus two built in, um, especially when this guy starts getting higher fight values and, you know, some of those gators that get extra fight on Bayou and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I know I can pull them off, but I've already thrown away a get over here. But yeah, lots of tools I could have done. Just I should have been just playing cards to try to win more skill tests, but... I was just hoping, but it's okay. You want to go first? I know you don't need the gloves, but... Or do you want me to go first? Like, I don't know if you even plan to move, but I could move down here and see if there's clues here. Yeah, sure. You do what okay, you gotta so do. I yeah, will... If you can get a clue first, then yeah, maybe I can go in and, and take a fight at the Roguru, but I need to engage it, but I can't without someone spending a clue. And yeah. All right. I will move for action one. We'll flip this over. Broadmoor. Uh, this has a resign <laughs> with three, sorry, three shroud, two clues. Resign. Uh, can't catch the beast. You make your way to safety, letting the beast roam free. You can resign if things get real bad. Yeah, let me get over there. <laughs> this has two clues on it. Okay, so <laughs> that was action one. Action two, I will resign. No, I'm just kidding. I will use the old key ring uh, to test here. Uh, if you succeed, remove one key. Okay. Uh, so this is now a one shroud. I have two. Still have my... Oh, I need, I need to gain a resource before I do that. So actually, let's gain a resource for action two. That's a clue. And then action three, we'll do the old key ring and we'll investigate this. So using... And if you fail, you could still do it again. No, if I fail, I can get... If I fail by three or less, I can discover both clues. Oh, nice. So and Gray need to mess with that I've, too, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So I have... This is one. I have two. Oh my gosh, minus five. Okay. I don't think I can do this. Granny can make it a minus four, right? Granny can make it a minus four, so I fail by three, or, three less? or less. Is that three? I don't know. What is the test? One. Okay. I had. What did you get? I had three. No, you I had, had I had two. So this brought so you that down brought to me zero. down to zero. I th I think so. You know, I fail, fail by, by three. One. Or less. Okay, so then I will. You don't even need. I don't even need Granny. Need granny. So, right? We're gonna spend two. It doesn't go to negative. Yeah, it doesn't I go to negative. That's why it ever goes to zero. Yeah. So we are going to play, look what I found. Play after you fail a skill test by three or less while investigating to discover two clues from among your location and connecting locations. I will take both of these. And then I failed a test so I can do one more action. Which I will just start moving somewhere. Resources no, or cards. Maybe I draw a card. Drawing for maybe I draw a card. Yes, we're gonna draw a card. Oh, but you might hit your weakness. So we found it. Oops. Play after you fail a skill test by two or less while attacking and an enemy engage with you. Deal the attack damage to a different enemy. So that's the end of my turn. Well, but that could deal damage to the rogue if you're at the same location. And you're fighting another know. monster. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. Then, oh, this has got to go back and back. And I need to take one horror because I did not deal damage oh, on no. my turn. But we're gonna put that again on Granny. Poor granny. I know, poor granny. But she's not the good granny. 
The only granny She's you the got. Low level granny. I the know. Only gra granny you got right I know. now. You're right. You're right. You're right. Be nice to Granny. Oh, and I passed, so I had. To, oh, did I pass? No. You oh, used your if you fail succeed, effect. I didn't. Yeah. Okay, so I didn't have succeed. The key. Yes. So nice. the key. Okay, perfect. Just making sure I do yeah, it. Yeah, you use the fail effect to get it. Awesome. Done. All right, my turn. Yeah. But now I do have clues, if that matters. Okay. Let me think. I gotta lose two resources to move. I feel like I don't really care about that. Hmm. Risky, risky, risky. Okay. The three to fight. I'm a five. Yeah, here's why boxing gloves is really needed, right? This card. Without the boxing gloves or something else to give me plus, I probably should have played the card that I could spend money to do this. But, uh... At first fight, you get plus one for the attack. If you succeed, you may fight the enemy again. But if I pay two and fail on that first attack, and then this guy retaliates against me, and I don't get the rest of the card, sad face. Now, here's the thing. I think this is how you want to do it on the Roguru, right? Since his effect runs away after he takes two damage in a single phase, I feel like I want to do this fight and do the first attack normal, right? I don't want to put vicious blows into it. Because then that first attack would make him run away, no? And then if you succeed, you may fight that enemy again. But can I fight him again if he's run away? I just don't know the timing of his forced ability. I feel like as soon as he takes two damage, he runs. Forced. After the Rogue takes two damage during a single phase, find a location that's furthest from all investigators, move the Rogue one location at a time until it enters that location. Is he still around for the one-two punch? Or does the two punch miss if I miss the one punch? Uh, or if I do extra, sorry, if I do extra damage on the one punch. Like, I'm worried if I do extra damage on the first attack, he won't be around for the second. So I feel like I should do the first one without extra damage. Which means without vicious blows, which means the first test probably uh, fails? fails. Yeah, there's a higher chance of failing. But what, if, what would you get if you did the one shot with all of that? So if I, if I got the first one off, that's just as one damage to him. He doesn't move. Then I do a second attack, which has plus two fight, plus one damage. I then would get crazy throwing in vicious blows into that fight. So it's two damage, three, four, plus this guy's reaction is five on, on that second fight. So it's a total of six damage in the, in the whole... The whole thing. And if you did it where you just put all of it in on the first attack, it's only five damage? If I did on the first attack, I wouldn't use this card if I'm worried about it failing. I would do uh, Monster Slayer instead, where I would fight with plus one damage. Okay. And then I would just throw all this in. That's why I'm asking how one-two punch works. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just asking uh, if, for if, the... If there's a chance I miss on the first one, he runs away. Or if I succeed on the first one, he runs away. Uh, I want to know when he runs away. Does he run away the second that first attack does two damage? Then that, that's bad. I don't want to do Vicious Blows, which could help me win the test. Fuel says, he'll stay until you finish the phase. The card allows you to make two attacks in a row. It's all in the same phase. Uh, no, Buell, not, not true, not true. I don't think. Uh, f the phase part, I read online that this guy is supposedly in the same phase. Uh, this doesn't check it at the end of the phase. That the Roguru actually can, if we were playing two player or three player or four player, if I attack him, let's say I just did one straight attack. I do two damage to him somehow. I play a vicious blow. He actually runs away, and another player can hit him in the same phase, and he will trigger again and run away. Then if another player does it in the same phase, he runs away again. So his ability can go off multiple times in the phase, which is why I know it doesn't happen at the end of a phase. It happens as soon as it happens. It's just I don't know if the forest happens after I'm done resolving all my attacks, or does the forest happen right after the first attack if I do two damage? He's good. It's not like a forced interrupt. But the four interrupts mean like they kind of interrupt the action from happening, so. The card text will complete, says Yogi. It says phase, so I think he stays for the second punch. But I'm usually uh, wrong, he says. Yeah. <laughs> card text will complete, so the second punch lands. Yeah, I'm just not sure if it's like this can stop you doing the whole effect. I feel like you complete the whole effect, but I just want to make sure. Uh, it's just some weird things that come up, right? Yeah. So yeah, we'll treat it as it all happens. Uh, FAQ okay, rules. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, this is this is what Kate exactly what I'm talking about. 
it, from the FAQ, it says there's no limit on the Rogerous Forest effect. It triggers as soon as its condition, one damage per investigator in a single phase, is met. It can trigger multiple times in the same phase. Yeah. So, Kate, when do you think, you think uh, after the first attack, like if I did this fight, you get plus one for this attack? And obviously you resolve the full attack, I would go to apply damage to him. So if I did the first fight and I put Vicious Blow in, that to me does two damage. Or if I did my reaction ability, that would do two damage to him. Does his force fire off right away? Or do I complete the card where even though I did two damage to him, he's still there. He's still there. I do another attack. I throw in more Vicious Blows, do all this other damage. And once my card is fully done, he runs away. I'm just curious. Like, I, it's, there's no clear answer out there. There's no FAQ entry for that that I know of. It might be solved in the rules. But again, I tried to read a whole bunch of rules this morning. I was trying to figure out all these weird interactions. And uh, I was trying to understand how this guy's cards work. Because when I read this card, I was like, ooh, that seems like a straightforward effect. But I've played enough of this game to know that that's not a very new player friendly like uh, line of text there, uh, those multiple sentences. Can really mess with some of the rules of the game and make it a little confusing. It's after the entire fight is resolved, check his damage. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because there's a, uh, Bob is saying we're talking about your fight phase. Uh, uh, there's Christopher, no fight phase, but yeah, I know but what then, you mean, like the full saying, test, right? But this is one action that you're doing. It's all like one action. Okay, so if it happens after the action is complete, I that totally makes sense to me. I just didn't know if it was like after, you know, because what I'm doing in this card, one action, but I'm doing two skill tests. And obviously I'm going through one skill test all the way, you know, steps five, six, seven. I, I find out if I win, I apply my damage, all that stuff. I slap the damage on. That seems weird that right away he doesn't run away. That then I can finish my card. I'm on the same action. Now I start a whole other skill test and fully resolve it, put more damage on him. I just didn't know when his force is checked. Yeah, and then Kate's saying the same thing. It sounds like the, it's all one action, so I think the rogue would not okay. leave the end of the action. I appreciate everyone's so feedback, because again, we're not like rules pros with this game at all. I love hearing the discussion, and everyone's like, uh, you know, I just would play it the way that the card I feel works. I'm giving the guy a one-two punch to the face. Yeah. Normal enemies and bosses, this all makes sense. I could sit there punching a massive enemy, but the fact this guy just has this forced and runaway it's like the way it's worded, it just it just confused me because it says like after the Roguru takes, you know, two damage. So it's like, when is that after? And when like, is that check? I do one one punch of my one-two punch and say he's at two damage. Does he run away right there? But yeah, we'll finish the whole action. Okay, that makes sense. I'll do that. Okay, so that makes sense. So I could throw a whole bunch of vicious blows in on the first one then. Yeah. To help try to help it succeed. The only problem is it's a little scary. But either way, either way, I could fail a test yeah. doing a lot in one. So. Yeah. All right. So I would have to move. I'd have to engage. You'd have to spend a clue to engage. And then I get like a one chance to fight him and I'll do the one-two punch. Yep. I have to lose. So let me just double check that I have all the resources I need. Because I'll lose two resources from moving away from the bayou. So those will be gone. I have to spend two for the one-two punch. Vicious blows are free. Uh... There's no clues to gain. Oh, I could probably play evidence after he runs away, right? After you defeat an enemy? Maybe he hasn't left yet then. I don't know. That's the other timing. Cover one clue. Hmm. I don't know if I could do that if he runs away first before I can do evidence. That's another weird one. But I probably would just do it anyway. But yeah, these are like the weird timing things. You got to like memorize the timing chart. Um, yeah, it should be good. Okay, so I'll move. Lose two resources okay. from moving. Thanks to this crappy, sticky bayou that steals my money. Do you have to deal with this one too because you moved? Yep. So this will go away. Uh, I take two damage. So I'll give you this. And now I'm at six out of nine. Ugh. Then you just got to go back here and heal it. <laughs> if I can survive. Yeah. If I fail, this guy retaliates. I know. And I might and then be we dead. Just, then we just reshuffle. And... I, ha I, have this, <laughs> I have this though that could prevent a damage. But it's only from attacks. So I don't know if... Is a retaliate an attack? That's the other thing I'm not oh, sure. Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. Because then that means flush words even worse. It says only from an enemy attack. But I think retaliate is they attack you. I think so. Yep. 
Yeah, the enemy performs an attack. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it is them attacking. Okay, so that would work on a retaliate. But it just prevents one. <laughs> oh, yeah, and they're also saying he won't be defeated, so he can't do evidence. Because evidence has Oh, that's defeated. right. Yeah, he's, yeah, not yeah. he's not defeated. He's not defeated. He's going to run away. Yes, I forgot. Sorry. Yeah. He's not defeated. He's just gone. Yeah. He doesn't go to the discard pile like I wish <laughs> he wasn't. Yeah, he's, he's running just, away. He's just gone from my location. <laughs> In my mind, I did I defeated him, but he's not defeated. Yeah, you're right. Evidence needs to be dead. Okay, so if you want spend to spend a clue, a clue yep. I'm going to engage this guy, okay. which scares me. I know. Because I, I have, I'm I'm bleeding uh, from multiple limbs right now. I've been beaten up pretty good. Yeah. Uh, all right. Now let's try this. This. I, I, the bag is going to kill me. So he's three fight. Uh, if I do one, two punch, I spend two. I get plus one fight. So I'm six on three. I feel like I throw all the vicious blows in on the first one. Yeah, just in case. Like, just to help me try to win that first one. But I don't know if it's good to spread them out for like... But then again, if I don't win the first one, I don't get the second attack. Yeah. What is that, eight on three? Yeah. Uh... Yeah, eight on three. I feel like that's like amazing in every other scenario. <laughs> in every other scenario. In yeah. every other situation, I'd be like doing that all day. That's overkill, I feel, but. Oh, please, please, bag. You've been so mean to me all game. Just be nice this one time. If this fails, the yeah, I'm, stream I'm, is done. He's yeah. going to run away. I quit Arkham Horror. <laughs> Until next week. <laughs> oh, you got it. Minus three. You got it. <laughs> How much damage do you get? I still recommend, I should have said this before I pulled that token. Ask the children to leave the room. Because <laughs> that could have been earmuffs, bad. Earmuffs, earmuffs, uh, curses may be dropped, and we have another test here. So this one's the one that we need to happen. So if the next one fails, I'm a little more accepting. So because of that, uh, so I will do uh, one regular damage, two, three. I'm going to react when you deal damage to an enemy by an event or fight ability, which is this one, or these ones, whatever. Deal one additional damage limit once per phase. So a total of four. So one, two, three, four on, on him. Okay. Okay, to start. These are gone. Now I'm going to do the second one. It says, if you succeeded, you may fight the enemy again. You get plus two and plus one damage. So this is a test of seven on three. Kind of don't want to put these in. Because they could lead to my other attacks. They're free. They get extra damage. Uh, they're just nice. Monster Slayers are nice. But I may not need both. Let me think. So if I do get this one through, it's another 2 damage. And that puts him to 6 out of 10. We do know he gets attachments that could give him extra health. But if you put those in, right now you're doing... These another... don't do extra damage. They're just literally for one icon. Oh. I feel like the value of this doing like one extra is not worth... The awesome like fight plus one out of an event which could fire off this extra damage on a future turn mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, yeah. that that these i want to save i think yep but i need also extra fight with these like these these alone won't do good unless i get more plus fight actions uh or f skill icons or whatever yeah or my gloves yeah uh so i'm just gonna do the seven on three which again feels this like overkill do, this can do two more damage yeah this is just for two more damage Minus two. Yes. We're good. Okay. Oh, boy. Thank you, bag. So two damage, so he's at six total. Yep, he's at six. There you go. Six out of ten. So we're tied. We're tied. Okay. <laughs> Except for I only have nine health. But yeah, we're tied for damage. Okay. Toe two. to toe. Oh, so Yogi's saying two more. Why? Why two more, Yogi? What are we missing? Oh, maybe it's just the two more we just put on him. Did we do the right amount of damage? I think it's just the delay. He's oh. Just, yeah, six is right. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. It's just sorry, remember, it's delay. Remember, yeah, yeah, there's sorry. like a 15 second delay, so we're just yeah. seeing it late. Yeah, yeah, we did that right. Okay. So now he's going to move to... Trust me, I looked at my cards multiple times to try to see if there's any other sneaky damage I could do. But... <laughs> so now he's going to run. He's going to leave here. So after the roger takes the damage, find a location that's furthest from investigators. Where are you? Here. 
So I can't put him up here because he's one away from you. I can't put him here or here. He's one away from me. Uh, so the furthest is one of these two. Okay. I'll pick this one. So to get there, he went through this these one. These both have the same and art. Like, we don't know which one's, like, good yeah, or bad. But, uh, yeah, I'll throw him up here, I guess. So he went through here to drop a token, here to drop a token, here to drop a token, and ended up here. So you still have one more thing, so we couldn't still we can still attack without getting more clues. But uh I think I'll just make my way maybe towards this one. Well, I could have chosen to do that advanced thing while I was engaged with him. Should we peek? If you want. Because it's not an action. It's not right? an action, so. Right? I could have done this when I was engaged with him, right? Oh, but it might have him run away or something. I, I don't want to flip it. I'm yeah. scared. And uh Bob is asking, can you show the skill cards that you chose not to play in the last fight? Uh he just wanted to see those ones that you were. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, these ones, Bob. So I, I had these cards that ha I could have used for fighting, or I could have used them earlier for like uh, agility or or um, uh, willpower. But I keep feeling like if I don't see other other ways of adding damage, this might be the play to like finish off the Roguru and maybe can help us win faster. Yeah, and they're events, not skill cards, which is why. Yeah, and they yeah. they help fire off my other ability. So yeah. I could literally do three damage if I can succeed on one of them. And in another phase, uh, so the next round, I could do one again and do another three damage to this guy, which is, like, overkill at that point. But again, I know there's that situation where he gets extra health. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. That's, I'm just saving these right now because I, I don't have anything better. But if I see another one-two punch, or have I already? <laughs> if I see another one-two punch, then we're, it's a whole different story. No, I haven't seen it yet. So, it's just because they're my only really, like, good fighting tools right now. So, I, I'm a little scared, but... Oh, no, they're not skills. Yeah, they're just events. Yeah, so they were yeah, skills yeah. too, which yeah. is... No, no, yeah. no. Oh, yep. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, that was all your actions, or do you have more? Yeah, Sorry. that was all. Yep, yeah, that was okay. all. Okay. Uh, enemies. No enemies. Just this guy, but he's loop and he's chilling. Okay, ready? Yep. Draw. Oh, I got a gun! I can get in the party. Yes, shoot yes, him. Yes, I can shoot him. Shoot the wolf. But you have to engage him first, so we gotta yeah. get more clues. Yeah. Oh, another flesh ward. Man! Mm -hmm. What icon is on that thing? Uh, Willpower? Yeah, Maybe. so yeah. I'm gonna use that in a test, I think. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get to do it right now. Okay, Doom. Oh no, we're gonna put Doom on here, which oh. makes this trigger. So, Darkened Skies. We've obviously been taking a long time setting up, drawing cards, doing nothing, so this is expected that this is gonna punish us for that. Yep. A violent storm rolls in as, you, as your search continues. Black rain clouds conquer the sky, and the air is thick with humidity. You recall that all of the recent killings took place late at night, under the cover of dark clouds. A shiver runs up your spine, and you cannot help but wonder, what if you were next? Shuffle the encounter card discard pile into the encounter deck. Oh, more of those dragged unders. If the... Sorry. <laughs> if the Rougarou is in play, find a non bayou location with the fewest clues on it. Move the Rougarou one location at a time until it enters that location. Oh, let's put him... Can we choose... Let's put him here, back by you. In theory, though, could I just choose, like, the same location he's at? Because, like, let's say this has the fewest clues, I could just choose that one, then he doesn't move? Yeah, but we might... I yeah, think that I... came up last time, and I bet somebody posted, like, a, oh, here's the rules for it. I, I just don't remember. But I we'll, feel we'll like move yes, him, we'll move but him. hold on, hold on, let's put some No, we're moving there. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, that's another thing where I'm like, wait a second, could he's, I just cheat and kind of... He's gonna leave here. Oops, yep. wrong side, I'll flip that in a sec. He's gonna leave there. Okay. He's gonna leave through here. And stop here. We want him here. Yeah, so he's like he's one away. to you, right? Because yep, yep. I already have a clue. Yeah, that works. Uh, if the Roguru is not in play after advancing to Agenda 2A, add one Doom to that agenda. No, we're not doing that. Okay, let's see what's next. The Roguru feeds. Oh, man. Around you, the bayou feasts. Flesh rips and jaws snap just beyond the trees. And light droplets of rain ripple upon the surface of the water. You can't tell exactly where the sounds are coming from. Perhaps the dreadful ambiance of the bayou itself. Six, doom before advancing. Hurry! Okay. There is one more agenda card, though, so I don't, I don't think that's auto-fail yet. But uh, time's a dick. Yeah. But we got time, I think. Okay. Um, so that was that. So, oops. Oh, yeah? You were meant to exploit it? Okay, perfect. Thank you, Yogi. No clues where he stops. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. <gasps> sorry. Cheater. Sorry. Yeah, it's only where he leaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, Which didn't, I, know. I didn't see you do that, but I, I, I Yeah. Okay, what do we got here? Oh, Spanner says it has to move one square at least, or you didn't change the game state. I mean, that does make sense. That sounds like it's a it's a rule and it's legal, and it, you know you throw that game state changing thing out, and that's a thing in different FFG games. 
but it's not always the case so but it does make sense but, but thematically yeah. it seems weird like he should be moving around that's part of like what is the thematically he's doing so for a theme win, it's like he's not going to just stay hiding in the same bush the whole time. Yeah. So he's going to move around. And we want him to move around. Because he does draw more clues. We want more clues dropped, right? Yeah, if so, we need them. Yeah. And we want him closer to us. So, like, why not? Insatiable bloodlust. Revelation. Ooh. Catch the Rogru. The Rogru gets plus one fight, plus one damage, and plus one horror. Cannot be evaded. Fourth. After the Rogru takes damage, discard this card. Okay. okay. So he's now harder to fight. He's a four fight. Yep. But if you can sneak through one damage at least, he drops this. Yes. So in theory, he gets plus one... Or, uh, oh, and plus one damage. Yeah. Oh, this is not extra health. I thought he got extra health. Maybe there's more. Oh, there might be another one. Yeah, plus one fight, plus one damage, plus one horror. Wow, so he hits for three and three back to us on a retaliate or if he attacks us. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah. That is scary. Because mm -hmm. he could, uh, if, uh, like, the plush ward, I could stop a damage, but I would be one away if he just does one fight on me. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to miss my fights or I'm, I'm dead. Yep. But if I can get one fight through, I can knock this off at least and help make it easier for you to finish him. But I feel like I'm going to go I gotta out. got to get some money so I can get my gun and play. Yeah, okay. But yeah, um, uh, draw your encounter. Oh, there's different attachments. Yeah, I, I thought... Oh, something. okay, okay. Yeah, I, could, I just remember before like we failed because his fight got so high. He had like multiple. And his health went out of control. And then it's like he was retaliating so strong. Yeah. So there's like no way to deal with it. Looks bad. Beast oh. of the Bayou. Revelation. The Ruguru makes an immediate attack. Oh, wow. That's terrible. The Ruguru makes an immediate attack against each of us here at the Ruguru's location and each connecting location. So, so sorry. we shouldn't have brought we shouldn't him have done here. That. Uh, we should not have done that. Bad choices. Bad choices were made. If no attacks were made by this effect, place one Doom on the current agenda. I would love to place a Doom on the current agenda, but he is going to attack me. Do you have anything? I can, uh, I, have I'll it? just have to do this. So he's hitting for three and three. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't have counterpunch anymore. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That would have been awesome. Yep. Oh, well. Uh, so I got to do this. Wait, tell me what you need here. Uh, so I'm going to cancel one damage. So give me two damage and three. Oh, I have two damage. I have two damage. So you just need a three horror? Yep. So I'm one hit away from death. Yeah, that oh. sucks. And three away from... Well, I have, I have damage here, but I don't want to lose this yet. No. Oh, do I have to exhaust this? No, I don't have to exhaust it. Okay, good. That's good. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. He's only a one-two punch away from death. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nathaniel left his gloves in the locker room. Yeah. I know, but I'm going to miss because oh. I don't have the gloves. But we're trying. We're going to try our best without the gloves. <laughs> All right, do you want to go first? Uh, what am I doing? I don't even know. Can you fight him? If I move in and engage him, so my fight right now is against four at five. I uh, would play this. Six? Maybe I put this in maybe for a skill of seven. Yeah. Seven on four. You're if I miss, three. I'm dead. If I miss, I'm done. I'm out of the game. I'm out. I'm done. So, like, I think putting him near us was a mistake. Because he might draw that card again that attacks. Even if I just sit here by him, I feel like this is punishing you for sitting near him and taking your time. Yeah. I could move back to Lady Eastbreed and, and try heal? to heal. That's, that's I think, my play here. Yeah, it's a safer play. But he's still hitting for three. He puts me right back in the same weird situation. So that could be a, a waste of actions, waste of turns. But if you move, heal, and then dig... I know, I need to draw. I need to see other stuff. I have lots in my deck that has fight icons on it. Yeah. I could see a one-two punch and I could set up a future fight. Yeah. Or you come I'm, with me. I'm going to start going this way so I can try to get those clues. Yeah. And maybe maybe you can help me on more. the same test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just scared to fight him at if I that can, range. If I can get my gun in play, I also have this card where I don't have to pull a, a token. So I can do the final two damage, oh, but I need wow. seven resources. So I need to build up some resources to do, but I can do there it. There is uh, this. You can take a horror and get two resources from here. Yeah. Well, I got to get a But you have to it. lose two going through. But I also need to get a clue <laughs> because you'll use one clue and then I'll need to finish, right? Because I think you can do... Yeah, so I can do it, but I need seven resources. Here's the other I problem I just realized. So if I move here to heal and I only have one resource right now... I don't know if I didn't gain one where I should have, but I feel like it messed up. Maybe. Oh, you didn't because you had one left from the other yeah, action. Yeah, I feel like it messed up. Your subscriber, Ravenlight, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, move, heal, and survive 
for gloves or ally to soap. Yeah. Yeah, if I yep. can find an ally, that'd be good too. But again, I don't have a lot of money. I need my I need my two cost uh, twin brother or whatever he is here to uh, come in. Yeah, but I think if you try to stay, a little I'm gonna longer, draw. Do I go first? Or you go first. You go first. Okay. Oh. Uh, I, all I think I would do is gain two resources and move. Okay. You want me to do, just do that? Sure. All right. Breathers, action one, action two, and then move. So I'm trying to get closer and try to gain resources at the same time so I can okay. get this combo to go off. All right, I'm going to start by drawing a card. This means I'm not attacking him this turn. I, I think I'm giving up on that. I'm not going to risk it. Also, if I... Oh, also, which is good. If I can get this combo to go off before you, I can get rid of this because this ensures he takes yes. damage. Yes, that's true. I mean, he flees, but... Yeah, that's true. But it ensures he takes damage. Because I would be going at it with five on four, also, and I don't pull a token. Also, I debate just uh, moving, healing, and moving away, so I'm not near him. And then when he runs away to the furthest location, if you do hit him, he's gonna run. The oh, he direction, run this though. way. Yeah. yeah, I would have to be like in the center. <laughs> Raven Light made us hit 11.9k subscribers, says Bob. Thanks, Raven Light. Thank wow, you so much. That's, awesome. that's cool. That's it, awesome. it literally just changed. Bob, thanks for uh, refreshing as we get new subs. I love it. <laughs> but it might show it like below the video, you know, while oh, you're watching. I, have no idea. I, I don't know if YouTube changes the number like on the fly. I have no idea. Look. Which is awesome. Actually, oh, it's, no. It's... <laughs> Actually, Bob, no. Uh, unless others subscribe. So. Well, one just did. Yeah, so we're actually at 11, uh, 905 right now, according in the back end where it actually shows it. But either way, somebody today probably made it hit that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're five over already. Awesome. But thank you so much. Thank you. Almost at 12K. Which is crazy. That's crazy. Thank you for subscribing, you. everyone who does. Thank you. And uh, yes. Fabio, who just also subscribed. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fabio. Okay, okay. we can do this. We can do this. No, but... On the way to 12k, yes. Thank you. Okay, okay. Let's... Uh... Yeah, I'm gonna draw. Okay. I'm not gonna it's fight It's not gonna turn. be a weakness, so... Stand together. Choose an investigator at your location. Both you and that investigator gain two resources. That could be helpful. That could be helpful here because yeah, I yeah. get my little combo. Okay, but help, yeah. It's helpful for you to get the damage, but I still don't see how I'm doing it. I'm not even going to fight a skill card. All right, so I'm going to move. We can't play it yet because I'm not there yet. And then I'm going to Lady Espreet. Uh, yep, I'll put a horror To on heal there. too. And give her a horror. <laughs> but okay. you could also do that at the start of the next turn as well. Yeah, true. But I wouldn't be able to move in and fight though because you need... No, I need a, I'm going to go first. Yeah, I know, but I need a full three actions. If yeah, I, because we don't have... But any... I might draw into something where I could just go in and maybe finish him. If even. that's the case, then we save the clue for you. But we also need to get a clue here so that we can fight one more time. Yeah. We need another okay. clue for sure. True, true, true. Yeah. Okay. Bob is being funny in the chat here saying only 95 away from 12K, 24-hour stream. <laughs> You're funny, no, Bob. No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> No. Maybe at like 15k. 15, yeah. yeah. But not a 24 hour. We could do something different. 15k. I'll do another marathon. Of some something. sort. Something. Something. Yeah. Won't yeah. be too many bones. It'll be something different, but we could do uh, something 24 crazy. 24 hour Arkham Files. I'd be in on that one. <laughs> Brian, at For this 15K? point, at this point, 100%, that's what it would be. Right now, that's we have all these Arkham games. Mel, I'll let Mel pick it, or we can let people vote. No, we but... can let you guys pick it. What you want to see yeah. play. Last time I was selfish, I was like, man, we finally reached 10k. I don't want to do the well, usual. that's a huge milestone for you to, to say what you wanted to do. No, right? I know, but everyone does the, the candid, like, they go just look every, copy every other YouTuber who, like, hits that. They do, like, oh, a, yeah. do a contest, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do a 24-hour stream. And no, I want to do, I want to play my favorite game, and I'm going to do it for 12 hours each day. And that's how I want to celebrate, hang out with all different people coming over and playing games. Yeah. Yeah, and I missed it because we hadn't done it in a while, too. At that time, it was, like, COVID stuff, and mm -hmm. it was nice to have when they released, uh, when they reduced restrictions around here, and we were allowed to actually have people over. Uh, but, yeah, it'd be fun. Kate has a suggestion of a 24-hour of Arkham Horror LCJ playing an entire campaign in one day. Which would be cool. Yeah, we could do that. Yep. I would do that. Which would be cool. But the only thing is... But it would is, be tough for people watching and joining in. Yeah, that's that. That's the only problem. That's why we didn't... That's why I wanted to play Too Many Bones last time, and we kind of did different modes, because I didn't want to do... I was thinking of doing a Legacy or a Campaign game, 
and just binging it all. Uh, but then the problem is people joining midstream are like, don't know what is going on mm -hmm. and spoilers are all over the place. So yeah, we'd have to do a campaign we already played before. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't that. know. We can think about it. No, I don't know about that. Uh, Seth says 12K, will there be a 12-hour stream? 12-hour stream. We could do that, 12K, maybe. 12K, 12... Uh, that's possible. It's possible. <laughs> that's possible. Yeah, we could probably do that. <laughs> okay, I was only but, joking, but I mean, no, if you but want I, to. <laughs> I would love to binge a campaign. Yeah, I would too. The only downside is we still play slow. Streaming it, there's a lot of like overhead and chatting and the bookkeeping in between. And we'd have to break to eat and stuff. Yeah, so we'd have to break to eat. But just saying, let's let's estimate each scenario on a good day on a stream is like two and a half to three hours. Let's mm -hmm. say they're three hours with breaks, overhead in between, deck upgrading, all that stuff. Because we'd be doing all that on the fly. And we're not the most efficient players, as you can see. We're not the most efficient at choosing upgrades <laughs> for our decks. We're not the most efficient at knowing all the timing charts and the rules. So three hours a session times eight in a whole campaign assuming we get through all the scenarios so like let's say we played dunwich and we know we can pretty mm -hmm. much do the whole campaign we're fine yep we think uh yeah that would be eight times three minimum yeah 24 yeah 24 hours straight on and and you know as we get more tired it gets longer and messier and yeah reading everything yeah we can't do we can't do 24 hours and we'd have to do it broken up the, like we the, did. the zealot one would be the only like campaign three scenarios mm -hmm. take our sweet time do like return to the night of the zealot yeah pick up greats on stream in between yeah. and stuff like that and we, yeah. we would incorporate standalones in there do a couple like you know go curse the rogue or whatever do like a standalone side quest you know prolong it a couple of sessions yeah maybe make like a five scenario campaign or a four scenario mm -hmm. campaign mm -hmm. That would work. Yeah. That would work. Or like, and, and it's and it's the core set. Even if it's Return Two, I think people still might watch, and it wouldn't be too spoilery. Yeah. This would be for fifteen k, or this would be for twelve k. I don't. Uh, the the. <laughs> what are you guys talking the about? Long <laughs> the long stream. The long stream. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> Bob says we promise to shut up and not disturb the twelve-hour stream, don't we, kids? <laughs> With his fingers crossed behind his back. <laughs> And then the finale is Murder at the Excelsior. Oh, that would be mm. cool. <laughs> don't make promises, chat. Absolutely will not keep talking. <laughs> we don't want you guys to sit silently watching us play yeah, for 12 I... or 24 hours. That'd be boring. Exactly. I don't want to put my head down and just mm -hmm. try to rush through a playthrough so that, you know, we nope. can go to bed at some point. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's not fun for me. I like having fun, enjoying yeah. the experience, sharing it, taking time and interacting. It's fun. Yeah. But I do like the way we did it the last time with two 12 hours. Yeah, that was I mean, definitely better. I mean, just for us mentally, it was, it was much better than when we yeah. did our 24-hour stream. Yeah, that yeah. was a lot. And then we were off for a few days after that. 12-hour streams we can do. I, yeah, we could easily do like a 12-hour weekend of Arkham where we literally like, okay, we're going to start off with some like chill Elder Sign, throw an expansion mm -hmm. in, start off playing Elder Sign with some friends that show up. And then, you know, if they stay around or different people show up, let's bust out Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. You know, let's do an Elder Eldritch Horror somewhere. Let's play one standalone scenario of Arkham LCG. Yeah. You know, flip into whatever. Arkham Horror. Yeah, you said that one. Arkham right. Horror Final Hour. Yeah. I can play as for fun. Cthulhu Death May Die. No, that's no. not an Arkham Files game. Not official. No, it's it, not it official. Would break the, it would break the whole oh, thing. Oh, it would break it. Okay, okay. Yep. Okay, we'll figure Sorry. it out. We'll figure it out. Uh, Mansion of Madness 2nd Edition. We yes. do one of those in there. Yes. And yeah, it's just like a weekend of that. Kind of like we did last time for the 24-hour stream. Or even the Too Many Bones 2-12-hour two, two stream. That's what I'm saying, yeah. yeah where yeah. we just kept trying different game modes with different characters and different people mm -hmm. showing up to play. Yeah, and then if you show up in the middle, it's not such a sp yeah. spoiler. Yeah. You kind of just can say, okay. Yeah, everything is just standalone. Yeah, it's all standalone, exactly. Yeah. So that there's nobody, anyone could show up, you know, for their time zone and show up at like 9 p.m. and go, oh, they're just starting a game of something. You know, and look at the schedule and join in. They don't join in and we're in the middle of like, we're in scenario six of the campaign. Uh, yeah. This is what's going on. And they're like, I don't know what's happening. I don't know why you're doing this. Yeah, I, I don't want to do that. So we'll schedule it. Bob yeah. says, okay, okay, don't get ahead of yourself. You're still 95 subs. Might never happen. No, no. <laughs> I'm, ta for 15K, I'm talking Bob. for 15K, Bob. Bob, I'm talking for the 15K uh, <laughs> doing the two 12-hour streams again. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. we, can, we can do we it can that. We can do that. And we'll just fill it with all Arkham games and we'll schedule it. And we'll, we'll hopefully buy the 15K, and it's fine if it takes longer. Mm -hmm. That means all of our, our friends have their jabs in their arms and have their vaccines. Uh, and hopefully our, you know, our province and country and everything starts lifting restrictions. And it's safe to do so. Then we will have friends join us 
And, you know, people will come and go and we'll have different player counts for all these different games. We'll just have fun. Yeah. You know, just play some silly games and you guys can get involved picking characters and voting and, yeah. you know, helping us on turns and picking random numbers and doing things we, to screw with us. We and... could even do some sort of vote in the, uh, a poll where it's like, what's your favorite Arkham Files game? And then even base the games that we play on what is the most popular amongst you guys. Right? I think we can fit all of those into 12 hour streams. Likely. Yeah, likely. Yeah, yeah. If every game's like a four hour stream plus a yeah, little you're break, right. you're it's right. like, yeah, that's three games taking up one day, three games taking up another day. We, we can yeah, do it, no we problem. Yeah, we can do that, you're right. You're no right. Problem. We can play them all. Yep, no problem. But Bob says 15k, I'll be dead by then. Oh my gosh, Bob. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the day more oh, and no. more now. Just kidding, Bob, just kidding. Oh my gosh, well, Bob, then you need to start spreading the word that we need to get to 15k. <laughs> Sooner than later. Yeah, go cool. Bob, while you're waiting for us to actually get into a playthrough for the first three hours while we're doing our mm -hmm. intro, uh, you can go on to Reddits and Facebooks and BGGs and stuff and share. Share the video or wherever wherever you want. I guess not BGG. I don't think you're allowed to post other videos in, in there. I already share them there mostly. but Yeah, but Reddit, Facebook to, groups. Yeah, Reddit, Facebook groups, Twitter, Twitter. share stuff, retweet my tweets, like whatever, whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do. Get the word get out there. there. Find the fans in the groups. Share the stuff, find the forums, corners of the internet, the Instagrams, yeah. whatever you want to do. Two interesting things here that I want to mention because it would be both interesting. So Yogi says, or we can have a wheel to spin that picks our investigators. But then Brian says, play the same investigators through each game if possible. <laughs> both of those it, options are it, super cool. It would have to limit what's available because certain core sets or expansions may oh, not have. May not have the. So we'd have to play with like generic ones. We'll see. Right? We'll see. Anyways, let's get back yeah, to our regular back scheduled to the, program. Okay. We can we talk more about this we stuff can in, in the Q&A. Yeah. 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 Okay. That sounds cool, though. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Schwab's asking, hey, Rob, have you got the new Witcher game? I don't think they're delivering nope. yet. Are they? No, I, I, I don't. I, I feel like I won't have that game if I get it until, like, 2023. But, uh, yeah. I'm debating. I'm thinking of back in the Kickstarter on the Witcher now. We did some research. <laughs> We're kind of thinking Mel Mel's like wanting to paint those minis. I do. I mean, the minis look she so good. She saw the minis and was like, oh, man, you should get the minis. Even though I'm sitting here like, I don't want to pay for those minis. So, yeah, we might get the Witcher. Just, just... shelf presents. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> they, they do look cool. Yeah. I don't know if they'll really turn out that good in the end. I know. It's hard to say when you're just looking yeah. at a I have no image. I have no experience with that company. But anyways. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we, we might back the Witcher. Um, yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. So stay tuned. We might be playing it on the channel next year when it comes out. I, I don't know. We'll see. But no, I do not have it. I do not have it. Uh, go on board. I guess doesn't know about Rob's Gaming Table. And we love to play adventure fantasy themed games. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know who Go On Board was until people told me about The Witcher. So yeah. yeah so we I, didn't know I, to reach out to I, them. I, I didn't know to reach out to them. I didn't even know they existed. I've yeah. never heard of them before. So Yeah. And they didn't reach out to us yeah. though. So they didn't reach out to us to send us a review copy. But... They reached out to a lot of channels, it seems, that don't even play those kind of games, which I was impressed by. But that's, okay. that's cool. Yeah. It happens. <laughs> uh, so you're saying Go On Board is equal to Awaken Realms quality, Sajat? Like, for sure? I, I haven't played any of their they games. They have another game, but does yeah, that game have minis? I think so. Okay, so, it's, I mean, somebody would be able to vouch for their... So John says, "Yeah, Rob, but you'll be disappointed by that game. These miniature focus game, uh, these miniature focus companies like these guys or Awaken Realms never deliver. I don't know if I can compare Go On Board with Awaken Realms in the same sentence, to be honest. And Awaken Realms, they do deliver in some time. Some of their games really hit, right? But yeah, but not all. I understand. But uh, Go On Board, I know nothing about them, like zero. I just know they have some other game that just delivered, but kidding." Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't put them in the same category, and I don't even know Go On Board, but I, if I have never heard of them, but then Waken Realms, everyone talks about it all the time. I, yeah, I, I don't feel like they're on the same level. But I know what you mean, I know what you mean. Anyone who just focuses on minis in the Kickstarter campaign, there's not always a good game behind it. We know this. Yeah. That is a true fact. That yeah. is like plagued Kickstarter since the beginning. Bill's asking, are you going to check out Elder Scrolls game, Elder Scrolls game when uh, Morris mentioned about it? Well, probably. Right? Yeah, the the chip theory one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, <laughs> but again, man. We don't know it much about it. Hopefully, it doesn't suck. <laughs> just because it <laughs> has an IP, win. just because it has an IP on it, and we know this from video games, because you have an IP on it and you have to spend money for that IP, they usually cut costs in design, play testing, you know, other other areas, quality or or you know, staffing. 
uh, sometimes an IP on a game leads to a less quality game. That's just a known thing in the world because it costs money for IPs and it costs money for all that stuff. So that's why the Witcher board game I'm kind of scared of because they pay all that money for that IP means they're not spending money on other areas. So when you're paying for your box or your Kickstarter pledge, not only does some of that money go to shipping, some of that money goes to Kickstarter's fees, some of that money now goes to CD Projekt Red and or whoever owns a Witcher license and stuff. Uh, so yeah, you're getting less in your box and maybe less playtesting, less development, less work, less art, less whatever, because, or you're getting all of it, but you're paying extra for that licensing IP to be on the front of the box. So yeah, be careful. So when I hear Chip Theory Games is doing an Elder Scrolls game, that scares me like I'm going to be paying the same price as you pay for a, one of the giant boxes, but you're going to get less in the box and maybe a rushed project because they have to meet a certain timeline. Maybe they don't play test it enough. Maybe they don't work on it as much because they're just trying to like be quick and get a project out. Uh, for example, look at um, that re recloning of um, Street Masters that they do with the Contra license. So they look like they just whip that together dirty quick with the Contra IP and just reskin a game they already spent time on, Street Masters. They just slap some Contra art on it and they're trying to sell it as a standalone product for a certain price, which maybe you don't get as much in it as you'd expect from a Street Masters game because you're paying for that IP to be on the box. So these are the kind of things. Boom, that's, that's my thoughts there. So I just hope the Elder Scrolls license being on a chip theory game doesn't like make the chip theory game less great. I just hope, I, I, it's a chance it could get messed up. So, yeah. And they have no track record with an IP to know, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what I can do, Kate. We'll see what I can do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rob also says this is um, uh, about The Witcher. I think they're a very new company, um, but we'll definitely stay tuned for next year. Keep slaying. You are one of the reasons I got back into board gaming. Boom! Awesome. I love it. Thank That's you for the awesome. feedback. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you for watching. But yeah. Okay. Now, did you go first or did I go and not flip is the question. I don't know what's happening. We're back from our commercial break and we're back to our regular scheduled programming. And I, I remember being here. And I, I, I know two, I moved here and did this stuff. Yeah, and I just got two resources and I moved. I think I went first and, and I didn't, didn't flip, flip and then you went. Yeah. But I also then did not put a horror on Granny, which that is likely. It's Stella's turn. Oh, it's Seltron. I didn't go. Okay. Okay. That was what you did last That's turn? That's what you I did there? last turn, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Yogi. Thank, Thank you. you, Yogi. Okay. Yeah, I ended my turn for sure. I know what I did. Yeah, I moved he ended I, his I, turn, I, but I, I just drew. didn't know if I went first and did not flip my token. That's fine. Which just is go. Possible. If we're cheating and you get an extra turn, just go. Okay. It'll make up for all the bad tokens I drew earlier. Okay. <laughs> so we are going to spend three to get the Derringer in play. This gets two ammo on it. That's action one. Uh, action two, we're going to gain a resource. In action three, we are going to move with you. Flip. Oh, yeah. And then on my I next did. turn, I could play the you get your money. Yes. And I get my money. Then, and then we'll just lose that money when we leave the location. <laughs> oh, sugar. So I need even more money. Yep. What do you need the other money for? For the event that lets me not pull a token. Oh, yeah. You need to but go in there fine. with six. Yeah. But that's fine. I can just try to get this set. So now I did not do any damage. So we'll put a horror on Granny, which will unfortunately. Um... <laughs> okay. Then that is that. Okay. Now all horror is going to have to start going on myself. Uh oh. Yeah. And you did this? I did that, which lost Granny. Okay. Yep. All uh, right. Monsters? Uh, no. All right, reset. Yep, thank you. Raw. Oh, no. A tichophobia. After tichophobia, oh, sorry, put a tichophobia into play in your threat area. After you fail a skill test, take one horror, and I can spend two actions to discard it, which I likely will just do. Wow, this is really... Because I can't take Not only is it counter deck slowing us down, but now our own decks are, are like slowing us down really resource. hard. I need a resource. All right, I found my ally here, Greta Wagner. Okay, it's some self, you should get, you should end plus one fight. Is what I need, yeah. right? But it costs five to put into play. Wish I saw her earlier when I was sitting there with tons of resources. I would have loved to slap her into play uh, earlier then instead of Flesh Ward and stuff. But never know when they're going to show up. And I gain a resource. Gain a resource. Okay, so we're going to add a Doom. But yeah. at least at least I have Stand Together that I could use to pay to put her into play, right? I get that extra resources. Yeah, yeah, Unless yeah. I spend them right now for something stupid. A Cursed Swamp. Oh. 
Test a willpower of three for each point you fail by take one damage. And I just lost Granny. That is so unfortunate. Yeah. Well, so you're just not going to fail by a lot. You're going to pass. I have nothing in my hand that can help me. <laughs> I'm at your spot. Hold on. Uh, uh, hold on. Who's more? You have eight. You have six. Oh, this is just board. damage. No, this oh, is no, just damage. damage. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, you haven't taken any? I haven't taken any damage. Don't worry. Oh, I'm going you're trying to give three. me damage? No, no, no. I'm going three joking. on three here. I'm just kidding. Minus one. I take one. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Oh, come on, oh, man. These. Yeah, this could end me right here. I'm three away. Uh, oh, four away, technically. Okay. So it can't totally end me, but it can put me one away again. And I'm then wasting another granny, or, uh, Lady Eastpreet. Uh, so yeah, I'll throw a Flesh Ward in. So I'm testing four on three. Yep, four on three. It sucks, Flesh Ward. Like, you can't even use it on, like, damage from other sources, only attacks. So annoying. Oh, like, yeah, so you can't even use it on that. Such an expensive, crappy card. Minus one. Nothing. Nothing. Yes. yes. Flesh Ward for the My win. My luck is turning around, <laughs> at least from tokens from the bag. Not card draw yet, but. Okay. Uh, okay. Our turn. Did yeah. you put a Doom on this? Yeah. That's, I did. That's the Doom. That's okay. the Doom. Okay, so I am only getting one action this turn. So I should start. Oh, did I fail? I did. I'm going to trigger my ability when I failed that test. Okay, yeah. So I get an extra action. Oh. So should I go first so you get money? Do you need the money right away? I guess uh, it doesn't really matter. If I get uh, I'm going to stay there so I, I'm going to stay there so it doesn't matter. For sure. You have four actions. I know you're going to use two to get rid of this probably, right? I'm going to use two to get rid of this. I need to, I need to gain... Uh, two resources I something? need to gain a resource. And I need to try to get another clue. Oh, okay. So okay. I'll just try that. Okay. Yeah. So you, you can go for, first. I do have a clue if you're going to fight him. No, no you, I'm going to go fight first. him first anyways. First. So, okay, two actions. We'll discard this. Third action, I will gain a resource because I need a total of six. And then fourth action that was granted from my ability, I will use to try to find a clue. I will trigger. I will investigate using uh, the keys to get minus two shroud. So this is zero. I have two. This, the... This you can't fail unless you pull the red, right? Is that the one? That's yeah, because none of these can make you fail. Just the red. Yeah, just the red. Shouldn't have said it though. Because every time we say that and clarify, you pull the red. Minus two. Okay, no, we're, we're good. Okay. We're good. <laughs> they get one. So clue, I get one clue. And the key is done. And the key is gone. Is it, is it a discard itself? Is it one of those? Yes. Yes. When uh, discarded okay. when there's no keys on it, which I have another one in my hand just in case we need it, Ooh. which I could have played, but I wanted to get the gun out if I had. So that's me done. I need to take a whore because I did not do that's, damage. Okay. All right, on my turn. Uh, I'll play stand together. Choose another investigator at your location. Both you and that investigator gain two resources. Okay, done. One, two. I'm going to spend five to put Gret Wagner into play. And then I'm going to Lady Eastbreet. For one horror to get rid of two damage. Now I feel a little better, but uh, okay. Done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Monsters, no. Oh yeah, but we're gonna draw them. We haven't seen I any. Know, we are. They gotta gonna be. be bad, we saw the one alligator, right? Uh yeah. One ball gator. Yeah. Oh, I got a lucky. I lucky. wish I was lucky. Take a resource. Oh, which I could use for you. Draw a card. Oh, oh lessons learned. A little late for this to show up, but hey, it's got a got a, a willpower icon on it, so that may be helpful later. Still no fight, though. Weird. Where's all my fight cards? Placing a doom on the location. Not any. Oh, but I think this is bad. On the prowl, surge, uh, revelation. Find a non bio location with the fewest clues on it. Move the rogue one location at a time until it enters that location. Viewers clues, oh, non bayou. Uh, here, here, or here. Or there's mm. this one, but then we talked about the whole not changing the game state. So This game search, I'm going to put it there. So I, remember. Uh, I mean, you just draw yourself another card. Oh, yeah, That's how you remember. <laughs> Your choice. Um, I guess we could go here we, because it's all known information. There could be unknown information yeah, where true. it could stop our turn or something. Okay. I guess we're going to move him. Drop a clue. 
here, 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 as you move. Oh, not an enemy. Oh, no. Oh, but five on five silver. Okay. Uh, attached to the Roguru. Oh. The Roguru gets plus one fight, plus one damage, plus one horn, cannot be evaded. But if he's a five and I'm a five, I would win, right? Yeah, because okay. you're so not fine. drawing a token. I'm fine, as long as he doesn't get another one. But they drop off when you hit him, so yeah. that's amazing. which is good, because I can hit him right and now. And you don't have... fail, so no retaliate. Right, and I have five. Okay. Oh, I can put stuff in to make it more, so. But you're still too far away to do any of that, Now right? that he's moved, yeah. But hopefully oh yours is good. Shouldn't the Rogue be attacking you since both of you are adjacent? How? No. What made him attack? Nope. Okay. Uh, Bog Gator, Prey, lowest. This guy is going to go here. While Bog Gator is at a Bayou location, which he is, plus two fight, plus two evade. So he's a four, two, four. And I my fight is a six. Not the greatest. Okay. Uh, people's, or sorry, Yogi saying gain a resource, I think. Uh, didn't? You didn't spin it? Oh, yeah, new turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. You're right, you're right. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Now I'm going this way. Uh, do you want me to go first? I can't do... Yeah. I don't know, is there, like, do you want to get beside him, where we could draw the card that makes him attack Well, you? I need you're, to get you're... beside him so that I can even just... Yeah, you need yeah. to be beside him to do it on the next turn to move in. Yeah. But before you leave, is there anything... Uh, unless you want to fight, uh, can I help you fight? Yeah, if you have fight cards that you can play, that... That's fine. I have... One that I could play, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go first yeah, you and go fight this guy then okay. before you run away, is what I'm saying. Yeah. So I could. No, it doesn't work that way. All right, yeah, I'll go fight this guy. So I'm a six, uh, five plus one. Six. Okay, I'll put another one in. So you're seven. Seven on four. Seven on four. Fighting the ball gator. Zero. Five. So I'll do my reaction that does an additional damage uh, after I deal damage. Oh, no, that's just a regular fight. Oops. I needed to do one of these to do the extra damage. Don't, I thought, oh, it's only on ability? Yeah, I have to play an event to do it. Mm -hmm. oh, my bad, my bad. Uh, we'll just say I did one of these, I guess. Or I just fight him twice. It's up to you. I can only help you once. I know, that's what sucks. Then I didn't need you then because it's like, eh. Yeah, if you're going to do damage to the Rogue group, I don't think we need both of these, but... Yeah, because if you can do one, I'm going to uh, I can put... do three with just one of these, because my reaction, regular damage plus one damage is three. And I'm if you hit him two. and these fall off, and, and I can hit him for or three more, like where more he's dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll just say I did this on this guy, and whatever, it's fine. I don't know. Maybe that's bad, but... Uh, so I didn't trigger this, I guess. I don't need it. After you defeat an enemy... I can exhaust her. Do I want to put damage on her? Do we need more clues? Uh, we technically no, unless something makes us drop clues. Unless you die. Unless I die. Or I die. I just don't know if I use her to... De I have to deal a damage to her to get a clue from that location. I just mm. don't know if putting damage on her is smart, since I might need that damage space. I think we might be okay for clues. Okay, I'm not going to do it then. I'm sure I might get other chances for enemies. Uh... Yeah. Okay. So that was just one action. I fought that guy. You want to use Lady Esprit one more time? Should I? I don't, know. I don't think we care if she dies because no. we're not doing a campaign. No, exactly, exactly. All right. So East Lady Esprit action. She is all gone. I'll heal two, and then uh, I will draw a card. Yeah, because if you stay there, if I can go get I know, him, then he's I'll be able to, yeah, I'll yeah, be able to go on your side of the board somewhere. One, two, punch. The only problem is, uh, leaving here, I lose two resources. So I need to have like four resources piled up so I can try that one, two, punch again. But that's not, at least it's a, a fight icon that I could use to help win this one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, done. Done? Okay, so I am going to move and lose two resources. Okay. 
Oh, I do have... Oh, I have to move. So I could have played ev ev an event for one. The only problem is I didn't want to spend money, so... Fast. Play after you defeat an enemy. Discover one clue at your location. Two clues instead. If you defeat enemies with a combined total of at least four printed health this turn. No, I, I, I don't want to waste... I, I don't want to spend the resource on evidence. I, I, I don't want to. I want to save up the money for the one-two punch. And, and or I think other we're events. Fine. I think yeah, we're fine yeah. for clues. I'm fine. I'm fine. I think fine. we only need to find him two more times. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I probably don't need that because this. I, I if we can just beat him with this, this is free. But yeah, I, I just don't care about the clues, and I can always use the evidence to do an action. I know it saves an action though, and this saves an action. But that health is is key. I feel if the rogue is punching us for four, uh, and I have seven, ten. I feel like ten health. Buffer is nice, but I probably would lose on horror first, actually. Yeah, maybe that is fine. But yeah. Okay, so I moved. I want to be here, so then next turn I can move in and fight him. Move, engage, fight. Um, so I have two more actions. I think I'm going to draw a card. Oh, this is exactly also what I was oh, looking wow. for. Exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, In case card. he does get more um, attachments, it gives me more of a buffer that I can use on this. Okay. On that's my true. gun. So that's good. But now I will... Do I draw one more? Have other mm -hmm. weaknesses? One I more? have whatever my my main... Oh, um, you. what do you have? Two in here, right? Like, I got this already. That the that's one your one. basic weakness. So whatever random. my main weakness is. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just draw... I, I mean, <laughs> I'll gain a resource. I'll gain a resource. Because I do have a key ring that I can play if we need more clues. Yeah. So I'll just end my turn there. I did not take a or deal damage, so I will take a whore. Keep in mind, you may, because we're taking turns, we're going to draw events again, or encounter cards, you might get an enemy engaged with you. The longer we take, you might have an I enemy. I know, I know, but I couldn't do it this turn. I know, so. I'm just saying, but be prepared that you may have to fight before unless you I, fight him. Unless, unless I don't in? take, oh, is that free? Hold on. Yeah, oh, the oops in, right? is two, though. No, because the oops is two. I wouldn't have enough then to do this one. Two. Yeah, play after you fail a test by two or less while attacking an engaged enemy with you. Deal the attack damage to a different enemy at your location. No, no, no. But remember, if you... Oh, like I Like, if see. I didn't take a resource, then I could play this instead to deal the damage, which will remove the same idea. Yeah. And then you have a backup okay, so I, in case so I die. So I don't take the resource, and then I move in here. Okay. I think so. Yeah, he's still going to run if that happens. Still but... might fight you and stuff, but you... you and I have to run. fail the test, but we'll see. Okay. Done? Done. Uh, enemies? Nope. nope. Uh, reset. Raw. Oh, where have you been, brother? <laughs> uh, we have to have a chat. <laughs> so I got a lucky rabbit's foot, but I think it's too late for that in a gain of resource. Yeah. <laughs> After I just spent five to put her into play, I only have one companion slot. This jerk face shows up. Well, you can kill her now if you want to. <sighs> She's plus one fight. He's not. Yeah. At Where, this point, but the do you boxing, need the boxing gloves? gloves at this point? Or are you just going to show how you can just uh, use your fist? You saw what I pulled out of the bag. Minus sixes, minus fours, minus fives. I pull those out. So in my head, I need a, a plus, and he's plus two right now. So in my head, he's a five. Yeah. So in my head, I need to have 11 on the fight test to finish this guy. But I'm out of the realms of retaliate won't kill me right now. But I picture that I'm in the situation where his retaliate will kill me. Mm -hmm. So unless I succeed on that test and I hit him and kill him first, I'm picturing that's where the showdown is going to happen. Yeah. So I want to be in that situation where I'm able to do such a high skill test that only the red will kill will fail me. That's true. But I still could draw that and still die. So even even all the preparation might still be for nothing. That's true. And Yogi, I know that it has to be a different enemy. I'm thinking that if I ha draw an enemy from yeah. the encounter deck, yeah. then I'm in a space with an enemy. That's exactly what enemy. I was getting at. Yeah. If I'm here, then I have to fight the enemy separate. But at least if I'm yeah. here, I can deal the damage he can run in then Rob can finish. That's, that's why I was hinting like she should move in but, there if she's got a, if she gets an enemy she can be ready with all her tricks and stuff and then she could even fight that enemy and still have the action to engage and then fight this guy. Well once he's dealt damage oh it would only be one yeah it would only be one. And he doesn't run away yeah is this not plus? No it is plus yeah 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 it yeah. is plus never mind it'll yeah. be two but even so and that didn't cause a clue Anyways, it, so we'll see. It, it's all dependent on what we draw here. So. We will see. We will see in a minute. So we'll add a doom, and I will draw. It's not an enemy. <laughs> all that's or nothing. Uh, ripples on the surface. Revelation. Test a willpower of three. For each point you fail by, take one horror. If you are at a bayou location, you cannot commit cards. Okay, I'm not at a bayou, so luckily I moved. Um, 
three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, this could put me one away from death. This could put me one away from death. So, hmm. Okay, I didn't get an enemy, so I think I'm actually just going to commit this to the to this test. Because I don't need it for this yeah, one. Sure. So we are going to put in, we're going to go six on three. Yeah, that card's great. Yeah. And then if you fail, you like cancel all the bad stuff anyway. Yeah. Minus three. So I'm even. All <laughs> good. I take nothing. This was helpful. And you didn't fail though, right? I didn't fail, no. So, so I don't get the extra okay. action, no. Uh, even these standalones are stressful. I, and it's supposed to. It's supposed to be very replayable, which makes like why it's difficult. Ah, oh, drag thunder, which could do some damage. Good thing I've been healing. So right now I need to test agility, and maybe I can avoid this even coming into play here. Oh, so two on three. Come on, plus one or blue. Minus four. Okay. Can I take one? No, nope, it just comes into play with oh, me. Oh, it's that one. This is the one if I leave the location, oh, I, yeah. I take two damage. But okay. I have soak now, so it's yeah, not as bad. It's all good. I just hope I don't draw a second one before that happens. Yeah. Okay, our turn? Okay, so... Mel's excited. She has to shoot a gun. I get to do something. She has to uh, hit the rougarou. <laughs> I get to do something. Take some, take some of her anger out. Okay, so I'm going to spend a clue to engage him. <laughs> okay. Then we're going to fight... This is how excited the... she gets before she hits me. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to say that. Um... Oh, oh, I'm not supposed to tell people? <laughs> no. Don't hit me for telling people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We don't do that here. Uh, no. We don't condone that. No, we do not. Uh, I'm going to spend a fight, with, or I spend a fight with my gun. Uh, so I get plus two, and I deal one extra damage for this attack. If I fail, I get to place the ammo back. But I'm not going to fail. So this gets plus two, so three, four, five. He is three, four, five, so I'm even, right? So I'm winning right now. I think Jim is like very behind on the stream because he's talking about. I think the Roguru card says he attacks all investigators at his location and all connecting locations. But that card we saw so long ago. Yeah, because the card that I had was. Um, no, no, no. On but, the prowl. Did we mess that up at that time? I know I took my attack, but I don't think you were I nearby. I wasn't nearby. I feel like I was like here. Yeah, you were. You weren't adjacent, so maybe our arrows were like messy or something, and and it wasn't I don't know. obvious. I don't know. But I feel like it's when I was down here and the Roguru was here. Yeah, and I feel like I was here, yeah. so it may look adjacent, but yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's definitely not adjacent. It, she was, like, at least two away, if not three away from the Ruger at that time. I believe, yeah. But I, th I think Jim's, like, commenting on a play a while ago, so he's probably watching it delayed. If you're here, Jim, and you're hearing me right now, say hi. Mm -hmm. But I, I think you're behind by, like, a while, but that's fine if you are. Okay. Because I don't think you, we've seen that card again. I don't think so. The no. art looks similar on some of them, but... Yeah, that's the one nope, that I that's had movement. that moved, moved him. Yeah, no, no, no. We haven't seen that one again yet, but it's in the deck. Yeah. Hey, Kenji. Okay, so I am five. He is five. So in a tie, I would win. So I'm going to spend four. Seems so worth it. Good. Yes. So good. One, two. Uh, attack on the boss three, using a, not having four. to reach into the bag. Yeah. So this says fast play only during your turn. Do not reveal a chaos token for the next skill test you perform this turn. Oh, I probably should have done it before. Either sure, way, either whatever. way, you did I did it. it. Sure. So I hit for two. So when I deal damage, it removes these. What's your amount you're testing? And it was against a five. It's five on five. Oh, five on five. Okay, yeah. perfect. So then that does two damage. And that causes his little that causes runaway him to, to run. happen. So let's get some of these. So one of these two are your choice. Uh, does it matter for you? Do you care? Your choice. Let's I, just I don't go know. here. It's, and It's random because we don't know what's under them, right? We don't even know what's under this one. You move from there. From there. So from he there, is at eight damage out of ten. Okay. And you have enough for this to finish? I don't have enough to move in. I don't have enough action. No, like next turn though. Uh, I hope so. Okay. I hope so. That was only Unless he runs away again. <laughs> that was only one action. Because I was already in oh I had to engage him, that was two. I had to engage yeah. him and then fight him. So I still have one more and I pass the test, so I can then just move. I'm gonna start moving this way. Especially Remember to... when you're here, though, does this one give you more difficulty? So that includes on these. Oh, you're right. I, but hey, you're if right. you're on, like, you may not draw, you might draw an enemy. But then again, fighting an enemy is harder with and on, on the bayou. bayou is worse. Yeah, maybe I'll just wait there. You're right. You're right. You didn't fail a skill test. I didn't fail a skill test. I guess I will just. Oh, I could just play the key ring. Oh, actually, maybe I play the rabbit's foot. Yeah, I'll just play a rabbit's foot for one. 
So if I do fail in later phases, I can draw a card. Okay. okay. And I did deal damage this turn. I don't have to take a horror. <laughs> All right. That feels good. I am going to... Uh, I'll just move. I want to see two resources. Yeah, yeah, lose two resources. I want to see what's under here. <laughs> Hopefully not bad. Bowel Swamp. It's going to be bad. Sounds bad. <laughs> uh, while you're in the Foul Swamp, you cannot heal horror or cancel horror. And as an action, you can take up to three horror. Test willpower of seven. So search the Boneyard. Get plus one willpower for this test for each horror taken as part of the ability's cost. If you succeed, remember that the investigators have found an ancient binding stone. I don't think we're doing this whole little side quest no. way to play it. I do want it one time. Maybe if we play this like multiplayer, we all try to do all the little side quests that we have like three or four players playing. I think this would be really fun to try to do that. But in two player, it just seems like ridiculous. But mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Maybe it's super easy with certain investigators. Maybe. And certain deck builds, I'm sure. But I don't think we have the keys <laughs> to do that. But, what? Uh, I have keys? Yeah, not those keys. <laughs> not those old keys. <laughs> Talk about the new hotness keys. <laughs> All right, so then I can move one more. You take your chances and move in like I did? I don't know what's going to flip here either. That's true. But then again, if I, 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 I the same problem I was explaining to you is if I'm in here uh, and then I get a monster during the encounter phase. You can oh, I forgot to do this. Take two damage. Oh, yeah. Uh, which I will put it on my friend here. Yeah. Yeah, two damage. Sorry, this is gone. That I would have lost for moving. That's fine. Yeah, but you're right. If you do move in and you do get an enemy, you can just fight this one instead. You don't have to oh, fight the yeah, other one, Oh, yeah, that's true. Right? As yeah. long as you're doing a fight, it doesn't matter against two. And the only, the only fear is that he moves and runs away, but this has no clues on it. If move, so we can move him there. If he moves and runs away, I can fight for, again, two, three, four, okay. five, six, okay. seven. Yep. And I have a lucky. All right, so I'm moving in. I still have one action after this. Only on... uh, I found the overgrown... Karns, Cairns, which has an action, spend two resources to heal two horror, limit once per game. Oh, well, that's cool. I'm on the wrong side of the board. But again, I can do it here because he's aloof. I can do that mm -hmm. as an action. You have actions left? Yeah, I just moved mm -hmm. and moved. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't have resources anymore. I lost them. Yep, never mind. So in that case... I will just take a resource. Why can't I do that? I don't know. I don't know. Yep. Should probably draw a card though instead. Just to find more fight icons. And maybe the gloves? No, it's too late for it's that. Too late for the gloves, it's too late for that now. They are on the bottom. Yogi was right. Oh, they're right here. When I don't need them anymore, I don't care. Yep. Oh! <laughs> Told you. But it is two fight icons, so it is worth it. I mean, it That's is what worth I want. It. I'm looking for these. I'm looking for these at this point, and that does it. Okay, sweet. Done. Card draw for the win. Okay. But I should have just gained the resource there. So it's fine. No, because... Oh, yeah. yeah. I would have drawn it anyway. Yeah, it but maybe I'll draw more. Who cares? Okay, uh, okay done. Uh, enemies. Enemies? No. Ready? Yep. Ready up cards. Oh, yeah. Draw. Safeguard. Well, that would have been cool. This helps me, like, move with another investigator. So I could have had this in play if I got it early enough. And after you move from my your location to a connecting location, I could exhaust this and move with you That's if cool. we ever care to do that. So we're together for tests and stuff, and I don't have to waste an action to move. I got another rabbit's foot. But I didn't see it early enough. That'll just be used for a skill test if needed, because I don't need two. Oh, yeah, willpower icon. That helps. Okay. Uh, Doom. 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 Four out of six. You draw a card. Yep. Marsh Gug. Uh, spawn at any bayou location, oh. so I don't even need to fight him. You can him. put him here. Yeah, because we don't need to go back through there. Okay. He's not a, oh, he is a hunter, but that's fine. I think we might be able to finish. Fingers crossed. Okay, go ahead. Spectral Mists. Oh, perfect. This just attaches to any bayou location, limit one per location. Each skill test performed uh, at the attached location gets plus one difficulty. You can test two on intellect. To disrupt the source of the mist and discard it. I will just put it on the center one. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Beautiful. You go first. I go first. You go first. Do you have a clue to spend so I can engage? I sure do. You want, want me to spend it? Uh, yeah, yep. I guess so. Okay, spent. All right, I'm engaging. Unless there was something I needed to do before, I'm just double checking. Unless you wanted to spend a resource and then put the boxing gloves. 
Oh, well, then I don't you have enough do actions. Yeah, I don't have enough yeah. actions. So what I'm going to do, uh, engage, second action. I'm going to play Monster Slayer, which seems pretty accurate right now. <laughs> uh, so Monster Slayer, like this is the card you want to play to beat the final boss, hopefully. I yeah. could still fail, but if we are going to win, it's got to be with a card named Monster Slayer. It just seems accurate. Uh, which is a fight. The attack deals plus one. So I'm only five on three, which sounds like fine, but in this scenario, it's not it's enough. not fine. So I'm going to skill test in Boxing Gloves for two more up to seven. I'll throw in Raniel Cho for another one with a question mark. You're at five right now. <laughs> and a one-two punch? I think you go all in, right? Yeah. Now you're up six. But it's all my eggs in the basket. There's only one... Oh, and plus one here on Greta. Oh, so then you don't need to put in the one. Why? If you want to save it. Because you... Minus six is the worst, Minus right? six is the worst. So I other just need than... to get up to nine. Yeah. So I have se uh, six. Uh, seven, eight, eight, seven, eight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll throw Randall in. I'll yeah. keep the one-two punch. Maybe, I don't know. But don't you have five, six, seven, eight, nine? You don't even need that. This does not. Uh, this is the card I'm oh, doing. Oh, I see. Yes, that's yes. not a skill card. Yeah, you're sorry. right. You're right. Sorry. Not a skill card. This is my action I'm doing, but yeah. okay. I just want to keep it in place so no, I see it. No, you're right. You're right. I was just counting it wrong. Okay. Okay. So, so um, yeah, we're testing nine on three. Bob, don't even say it. No one saying it. At, at, yeah. Okay. Nope. Nope. Don't even. <laughs> really, another flip the table situation. If you have kids, maybe ask them to leave the room. Yes. Just in case. Put on the earmuffs. Just in case. Curse, curse words. Curse will be of said. the Roguru. Oh, plus one. Plus one. <laughs> That's fitting. I wanted to say, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to draw. I, I, I'm going to draw the cultist. Uh, no, no. I'm going to draw the reveal another token. And then, uh, then I draw into the cultist. It does another token. And then, like, I, I draw a few of these until they just keep drawing new tokens, and somehow they draw me into the tentacle, uh, the, oh, yeah, the yeah, fail, yeah. the auto fail. That's what I picture was going to happen. I was going to draw one of those, it would make me draw another one, and draw another one, and then all of a sudden, boom, there's a tentacle. That's what I thought was going to happen to me there, based on my luck, but uh, it did not. So, uh, I do an attack with one damage, plus one damage from Monster Slayer. I have a reaction to an extra damage, so I definitely do three more to this guy, which is more than enough. Uh, and we kill the Rougarou. You were the monster slayer. And goes to resolution two. Uh, resolution two says the creature gives a pitiful wail as a dark, miry blood oozes from its wounds. By the time its body collapses into the mud, it is transformed back into its original form. The form of a young, dark-skinned man, his expression twisted in agony. You bring his body back to Lady Eastbreet. Nope, she's gone. She went crazy. <laughs> she's at the loony bin. And she works her strange magic, removing the stain of the curse from the land. Call on me, should you ever need my help, the mysterious woman tells you. And then there's some in your campaign log, record that the Ruguru was destroyed and the curse was lifted. Remove the curse of the Ruguru weakness from its bearer's deck. Yes! I wish this happened during our campaign playthrough. That would have been cool. Uh, anyone investigator may choose to add, add Lady Eastbreed to his or her deck. This card does not count a word. Counts toward the investigator deck size. Oh, so even if she die, die, even if she dies or goes insane, you still can use her. That's pretty cool. That's cool. Uh, each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X. I think they got all put back on yeah. there. One. Oh no. Oh yeah, the Ruguru messes up the victory. Yeah, he stuff. does. But we originally <laughs> had two, but no. Ru Ruguru is not victory, is he? Where is he? Uh, right here. No, no victory. On what? That's so weird. But yeah. We did it. We did it. I, I think that's it. I, I don't know if there's more continuing to that. I'm trying to find the number. Resolution 2 on 7 and 8. Nope, 8's resolution 3. So we did it. Okay, so see, that wasn't hard. You didn't even have a weapon. I had a gun. The gun was cr uh, crucial. Oh, I had a weapon. I had Nathaniel Cho's bare fists. And unfortunately for the monster, there was no soft padding on those fists. So he still went down. But yeah, you punched him right in the teeth. I just wanted to protect my knuckles and, and, you know, my nails and my bones and stuff. So I, I wanted Nathaniel Cho to still be able to continue his hand modeling career after this. But because he didn't get it, he ended up punching the Ruger's teeth, cut up his hands. So 
So he's going to be out of work for a while. Yeah. Because uh, if you guys didn't know, he's also a hand model. Yeah, because aren't all boxers hand models? Yeah, of course. Right? In his spare time, yeah. he's a hand model. It's yeah. obvious. That sounds right. Uh, yep. So that's that's my theory on that. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fist of Fury. <laughs> Fist of Fury, yes. <laughs> oh um, my gosh. So, that was stressful, so though. So let's see. Where was the other boxing gloves? On the bottom. Oh, oh, it's coming. No. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I would have seen the second set either. But I did see Randall at least. Or even though Randall And it's crazy. I would have played them. Randall. I would have played Randall if, if I didn't have Greta in play. I would have played Randall and then found out the boxing gloves were like the next card. That's what I mean. I would have Randall lost was my very mind. close. I would have lost my mind. <laughs> Yogi says he does unboxing videos. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. Oh, we beat the Roguru. Yes, that feels good. Well, one beating the Roguru. So I think there's still one way we can beat the Roguru by playing the little game of. Mini -game? Uh, the uh, scavenger hunt version, which we kind of peaked at last time. I still would love to do that. I still like this scenario a lot. It is frustrating. The bag was not gentle to me early, of Definitely. course. My deck was not nice to me either. And it doesn't always go that way, but... Uh, I, I still say this one's so replayable. I think it's so fun. Yeah. And it's like the first standalone scenario, and I, I just think it's an awesome little experience. Uh, it's great. Uh, so yeah. Definitely better when you win. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I, yeah, he's I still smiling, right? Everyone see that? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely fun. Like, I, yeah. E even if we lost, I mean, I would have been frustrated that I didn't see my gloves. The deck was kind of coming out weird. But that, again, that's expected it. when you only have three cards in a 33-card deck. You think you're going to see one of those. It seems like good odds. Like, I need Randall to come into play or one of the two boxing gloves. It feels like that's fine, but like every so many games, they're just going to be stuffed at the bottom. Yeah. Like, you're just not going to see them. Or you'll get trapped by monsters and you can't put them into play. And then you're getting like, you're trying to put them into play, but you're getting um, attacks of opportunity happening at the wrong time, you know? So it's like, eh. I just wish he had like a, you know, after you're done setting up, you get to go find one set of gloves and draw them. Like, put them into hand like Star Lord does in Marvel Champions. And then I feel like it'd be so new player friendly and it'd be fun. But it does make the deck like really, really good. And he's still fine without them. Like his stats are still nice and fighting. He still draws into lots of cards with fight icons, even with the default deck. Uh, I found I always had fight icons when I played him one time before, uh, no matter what. And then most weenie monsters aren't going to be that high, but it's just for the boss fight. It's like, man, if you're not seeing any pluses and you're only coming out of boss with five fight... Uh, yeah. Eh, I don't know. And especially in this scenario with the minus sixes, fives, and fours in the bag. That's just scary. And he's retaliate. So you can't go to the Roguru and just like, oh, I'll fight him. I miss. Okay, let's try again. No, no. He retaliates. And if he's got, he already has two fight, two horror. And if he gets bonuses, it's just like, well, you're going to be done so fast. Yeah. So you have to go in with like a really prepared fight, which makes sense. It's all in the punchline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, he's also a boxer underwear model. Oh, okay. <laughs> I get it. Mm -hmm. Boxers. He wears boxers. Oh, I get ah, it. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, man. And that Exactly, Bob. Nathaniel needs copies of Prepare for the Worst. That I feel like you search for... I feel like he needs it more than, like, some Guardians. Like, it, it feels like that. He needs it to get going. Like, it, it just then... Because it fuels his card draw engine, too, right? Mm -hmm. You're able to grab those spirit events out of the deck. Thin the deck out. See other cards you need, you know? Like, I mean, you still could draw into your weaknesses. But, uh, yeah, I definitely think he needs those gloves. He needs them early. Get them into play. And, yeah, you just have the extra fight. Do extra fight on this upgraded version. Even on the base one, you get plus one fight, and you still can search the top six cards for a spirit event, which then leads into you just just gets your engine going. It's just the way way to play the guy. But he's an awesome investigator. I think Nathaniel chose an amazing guardian. But again, my only experience is playing Roland uh, and Zoe. That's all I've played. So I don't know. I haven't seen any of the other ones, so I have no idea. You know, but for an investigator starter pack, I think he's awesome. What do you yeah. think of Stella? Uh, definitely fun. I, I liked her. Uh, she's not super fighty, which is fine. Like, usually the red cards are a little more fighty, but um, she has a very different style. I know that in the 
little pamphlet that you get, there is different upgrade paths that you can take with her. So you can make her more of the fighty, you can make her more of the fail forward. Um, so there's different paths that you can go, which is fun because you can play this one deck in multiple ways. Um, but she, yeah, she's definitely fun. I really like the whole riskiness of her deck. So I like it. Ryan S. <laughs> Cho is a knockout investigator. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, her her uniques are so strong, and you get three of them. I love yeah, that card. That is when crazy. I when I was sorting out the collection, trying to find all Stella's starter cards. I I, I grabbed Stella's cards and I grabbed those ones first. Uh, and then I was like looking at them, like, why are there three copies? Is that a misprint? I flipped over the card. I look. She gets three copies, and all of her signature card has three question mark skill icons. Yeah, and I, I no, but I didn't even need to read the text. Yeah, and already I was like, you get three of those in a deck. Yeah, and, and it, if you fail the test, it cancels the effect. I, I it's a crazy card. Yeah. It's so amazing. So you get good. Three. So good. Oh, also, my upgraded granny was on the bottom of the deck, so Aww. she wasn't coming out to play at no. all. But yeah, I definitely yeah definitely Stella like. Just her, those signature cards in the whole, if you fail, you get an extra action. Yeah. That speaks to me. That just all sounds efficient. Yeah. I fail tests a lot. <laughs> and I appreciate you guys giving me survivors in the past campaigns we played and stuff. Um, but yeah, the whole idea of like, even if you just the luck doesn't go your way, you still get something out of it, not just a wasted action. Uh, I, I like that a lot. Because you're going to fail. Like this game, you're going to fail no matter what. It just happens. You're never 100% successful. But if you set up the right thing on a fail with a uh, survivor, it's huge. And the fact she just has those three question marks, it means you can throw those in and possibly pass a huge skill test at the right time during a playthrough. Like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know? Uh, and still saying, I like that the starter decks give the uniques the same color as the investigators. Oh, yeah, that's true. Instead of colorless. Yeah, oh, I like yes, that yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, they give you like 100% of that faction or class's yeah. uh, cards. Which is cool because and if you neat. just like playing certain colors, you can only buy those starter decks, right? But you don't also, need them all. Also, what it does though is if you're playing with more players out of the same collection, some players are going to take those neutral cards that, you know, the emergency caches and stuff, and, and maybe those other cards that, like, you now have cards in class that yes. can also gain you resources or draw you cards or give you those icons. It just gives you some good stuff as a starter deck that could make a solid deck on its own. And, of course, you can just fill in some of those neutral cards to fill in the holes. But it just gives you more cards in your collection that do similar things to fill in gaps or really push yourself in one direction. If you want to play more expensive cards... I could play, like, Nathaniel has cards that gain him resources, so I could play some more expensive cards, and I could throw in some emergency caches, and I could go really far in that direction of gaining money, because now there's extra cards in faction that gain you money mm -hmm. in the deck, so I, I don't know. That's just my opinion. But I don't know the whole card pool, though. I've only really looked through the cards we've played with so far, and some of them in the box, that I, I, I we haven't opened anything past the Investigator Star decks, two core sets, Dunwich, and Carcosa. That's it. That's it. Uh, I haven't seen what Forgotten Age adds either, so we'll find out when we start playing with it in that campaign. <laughs> yeah, Bob saying, I like the Stellar Investigator deck. Uh, a lot of the good Survivor cards come from there. Uh, I was surprised when I put the deck back together, I realized like a lot of Yorick's engine that I was playing with Came come from, from that i didn't realize that uh that yogi's deck that was uh the whole uh william yorick raven cycling mm -hmm. all that stuff mm -hmm. like a lot of those cards are in there yeah i was kind of surprised at that that's when i realized like wait maybe this does come with like a lot of good cards like which is cool Stella can get neither rain or slow back with resourceful oh yes but resourceful is not in this deck but yes yeah yes. in general like, in general yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can tell yeah. they gave you pieces that you can get by as a new player or, like, starting with the deck, but obviously, like, upgrades or a few tweaks. Once someone gets comfortable with the deck, they can easily pull from the core set or the Dunwich Legacy or whatever campaign you're playing. You can start pulling some of those red cards in, some of those staples, and sw swap them right in. And then you're like, boom, the power level increase. Like, you're, yeah. you're now playing with more efficient cards. Take out the ones you feel didn't really work for your playstyle or your type or the deck or whatever. And you're good to go. 
which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I like them a lot. Bob says, yeah, I like the Winfred deck too. Both of them can be made into very interesting decks. Hmm. Winfred is the is... green, the rogue? Is that the rogue one? Green is the only color we haven't played in Investigator for, is that correct? I think, yeah. I, I think on one of the polls, it got really close that I was going to play um, the one from the course set, uh, O'Toole, mm. the, the criminal guy or whatever. Uh, he almost won a poll one time. And I, I saw the numbers and I was like, oh my god, he might actually win. I might get to try Rogue, even though I don't know if Rogue's any good at two-player. Maybe that's why it's not working. Yeah. Yeah, Rogue's. Yeah, I think that's the only... This is class we haven't played. Is Rogue like a bad class to play it solo and like in two player? Is that maybe why it like never seems to get like voted for? Because I feel like Survivor's good. Oh, Jenny was green? Oh. Bob says, please don't call them red and green cards. It's min max language. Oh, like from Magic? Like oh. playing, playing, but. Was Jenny green? I don't even remember. Oh my god. Maybe she was a rogue. Yeah, she probably was. Oh. But that wow. was so long. We only played that for the... Uh... Oh, we only played that one for the um, Knight of the Zealot, right? With the three? Yeah. So that's why it's not standing Oh, Yogi's much. saying rogue is awesome, just the card pool is limited in it early on. Okay, oh, so that okay. might win pulls in the okay. future. Okay, I, okay. Okay, I, I'm excited then. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering, like, I haven't looked through all the rogue cards to know, like, what's involved with the rogue, like, what his play style is. Also, can I say that the Rogue. fact that they remember more than we do is insane. Like the people that watch, like Yogi. Well, they know the game better, so like we're, <laughs> we're trying to remember. We're trying Jeez. to remember how cards and rules work and running a live stream. Yeah. And like we're trying to learn other games and stuff too. But if someone watching already has gone through the barrier of like knowing all the cards, playing the game lots and lots and lots, reading online, knowing the game really well, all they have to remember is like what choices we made. But they. They have a bond to those cards and stuff that we haven't like really built up yet. True, I feel. true. Maybe that's I just it. think it's crazy. Oh, and also my memory sucks. Yeah, that's the other. Same. That's the other one. Same. So rogue, rogue is like more well-rounded, right? Is aren't they like a jack of all trades class? I think is that what rogue's supposed to be? Well, Yogi says once forgotten age cards are added, the pool is great. So. Oh. Okay, so that's interesting. So maybe for um. Trish, uh, oh, okay. Trish is like a, a rogue investigator. Okay. Um. So basically, on our next, I don't know. I still want to do another standalone with starter decks. Like we could, yeah, we could do the rogue or whatever if we can get three player going or something. I would. I do want to play. I want to play with all of them. So what we could do is, um, play. I mean, I, I don't know if we play this one again, but like we could play another standalone. Maybe even next week to give some more time for before Forgotten Age. Um, we're not, yeah. And we could just next week play like Murder at the Excelsior Hotel or something for fun. As a complete standalone blind? And, and then we play with like other starter decks. Like I could play Stella, you could play Harvey. Or I play Harvey, you play... Well, no, maybe I want to play the green one. Yeah, you play uh, Wilfred. Uh, Winfred, Wilfred or Wilfred. Or Wilfred or... Or... What's his name? Winfred. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's good to do that or if we should try. I think it's fun. Like, I don't care if we just fail murder and don't see. Uh, I know there's like multiple endings in that one. Um, but yeah. Or we could play Carnival, which we didn't see. I know, yeah, it didn't win in the last campaign. Up to you, really. I like this standalone scenario stuff. I, I think it's really clever. I like to see what they do in one pack. I loved it in Lord of the Rings, too. I, I always loved those little, those little packs and the way you could incorporate them into campaigns and stuff. Um, I like these just contain, like, they come with their own flavor of, uh, modules for, um, uh, the decks. You don't have to, like, pull from other sets. So it's, like, they really have a good control over, like, everything that's in there. They're not just, like, using other cards just because. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's different. And it also gets us more experience with the game, too. Like, I, I just like playing. I just want to play with different things and see different cards and see different things. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I just like, I like playing. But we could also just do that on a different day, too. We'll see. To Rogue is evading. That makes sense. They're, yeah, agility is the green icon. That would make sense that they're good at evading. Yep. And it's generally well round ish. <laughs> I do remember that. Yeah, when I played Jenny, she was well rounded. 
They tend to have high agility and cards that let them abuse that. So if you were to play two player, what's the other class you pair with rogue? Uh, any of you, any of you, like, what do you feel? What would you answer to that? In general, full card pool, small card pool, whatever, early game, late game, curious, curious. Like, if you were told you have to play a rogue and you had another player at the table, which class would you pull an investigator from or cards from or whatever uh, for that other player to play? Would you pick an investigator that's like more like kind of like dual class? Two rogues? Oh. Oh. Are you messing with us? Outside of the box thinking here. I don't know if we can do two rogues with our card pool because we're playing from like one card pool. We could if we did one standalone and one out of the... No, but then I, I like I don't know. Like I, maybe with the full card pool, maybe. I don't know. Kate says, my favorite mix is Rogue and Mystic. Oh. I also just realized, Kate, are you off again this Sunday? Because if you are, that's lucky. Rogue and Guardian or Rogue and Seeker, says Yogi. Okay. Either Guardian or Seeker. Then the rogue does the fighting slash investigating. Oh, okay, okay. Any combo is doable. Yeah. Okay, okay. so they're pretty... Yogi, I understand. Okay. I understand. Like, we should have enough upgrade cards and everything from the starter decks being included that we should have enough base cards to make two solid decks. And then when we upgrade, uh, we have to, like, share from upgrades. But we only get so much experience. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you're spending three, I'm spending three. It's like, we can pick... Fun we can definitely find cards that are worth three experience worth that we don't have to clash on our choices i think i also meant more so in a standalone because in that case you're not you're only putting maybe nine experience total you're not you're oh continually, yeah, yeah. yeah oh that right yeah, in yeah, that sorry. case you could yeah, yeah 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 sorry um uh but i do i do yeah yogi's saying the investigators are slightly more important than the class that makes sense too because some investigators you can get and then you can play with like out of the class cards right, too so right. it's like they could play with cards that help them get clues when they're a fighter as we've seen before yeah and they can cover like two aspects very well. Finn from the Forgotten Age, right? We haven't looked at any of them. Uh, yeah. Oh, you, oh, that's oh. who you like. Oh, he's asking if Finn is from the Forgotten Age. Uh, I don't know. Oh, no. Nope. The name doesn't sound familiar. So. It's... Well, we haven't. But some something I, I that we looked, haven't opened yet. I threw them on the polls. I don't. I don't know. I didn't really like go look at who they are because I have no control really. So. Mm -hmm. I don't have to vote. Well, I mean my vote. Yeah. Cards. Forgotten Age. Well, they got yeah. Leo Anderson, Ursula, Finn Edwards, the bootlegger. Oh, oh that sounds Leo. fun. Leo? What? Oh, does Leo have his own hero? I don't know. It's a different last name, so maybe, like, Leo Anderson. What was the other oh. one? Leo DeLuca, but it's another Leo. That doesn't mean Oh, it's... he's just a... Leo is a popular name, I guess, in... Arkham, Massachusetts. Okay, so where, where you were going? Uh, whoa, one willpower? That scares me. That scares me, but look, he can gather clues. I never really played with an investigator that had, like, intellect like that, I feel. No, I like it. Uh, you may take an additional action during your turn, which can only be used to evade. Okay. So you're just running around all over the place. He's a bootlegger, he's sneaky. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's his deal? Uh, illicit cards, level 0 to 5. Oh, I don't know what an illicit card is, but that sounds juicy. Mm -hmm. Rogue cards, level 0 to 3. Neutral cards, level 0 to 5. And up to 5 other level 0 seeker and or survivor cards. Wow, the deck building there is, that's interesting. Yeah. Lots of choices. Deck building requirements. Do not count towards deck size. Smuggle good. Vince trusty 38. Hot red handed. Whoa, he's got a lot of cards too. A lot of signatures. How do I I want to see those? Click on them from here. No. Oh. That's a failed opportunity. Mm-hmm. Be able to click on them from the description. But they would likely be listed here. Oh, they're down there. Go down a little bit right there. Smuggle goods. Yeah. In Edwards deck only. Play only if there are no ready enemies at your location. So you got you evade them, you make them exhausted. Search either a discard pile or the top nine cards of your deck for an illicit card. Draw it. Search your deck. Shuffle smuggle goods into your deck. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and it costs zero. <laughs> Finn's trusty 38. Spend one ammo to fight. Oh, it's got three ammo. Spend one ammo to fight. You get plus two for the attack. If you attack the enemy, if the attack enemy is not engaged with you, you deal plus one damage. So you want to like exhaust them first. 
or they're with another investigator at the same location and you fight them that way. Mm -hmm. It's funny, it like really leans into the whole like evading thing. And then caught red handed, was that his? No, no. never mind. I might have been his maybe, weakness. maybe it was his weakness. Oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah, it probably is. Yeah, yeah. Blunder. Revelation. Ready each enemy at your location or connecting location. Oh, no. <laughs> no! Each hunter enemy at a connecting location moves one location towards you. If no enemy moves as a result of the effect, shuffle Cotter Hand back into your deck. <laughs> oh. Wow. Oh, uh, that's dirty. That's not the worst thing, though, especially if you want enemies. Oh, I'm not sure about illicit cards. This is a family channel. This is <laughs> Brian. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what these illicit cards are. Yeah, yeah. So how do we easily search for illicit cards? So it's a trait by what I'm seeing. Go. Uh, whoops, cards. Search. Search by traits. Man, I'm kind of excited to try so many different investigators in this game. Man, we have like cards to play for like years. I feel like the way the way we're only playing like once a week. Oh, it's all like the weapons and probably like any like alcohol and stuff. All the all the weapons, burglary. We know that. Yeah. Card. I think okay, we saw this that makes before. sense. Contraband. Yeah. Colt vest pocket. Hiding hiding a gun in your vest pocket. That's cool. Contraband. Yeah, okay. Like yeah, all the alcohol, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this makes sense. Thought off shotgun. These may be Ooh. ones that we don't have access to yet, so. Uh, actually, hold on. Unless you put in. Yeah, how do you show, like, only collection? Yeah, because it's showing, like, Innsmouth Conspiracy, and we don't have. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, those, those are some well, cards we, we get to it. look forward to. It's just not in our collection, so hold on. How do you do it as just. Only cards in our collection. You would do that. You have your collection. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. then I don't know. Like I know it does it when you're building Seth? a deck. Go to sets up. No. Oh, but you can't. You. Yeah. Nope. Oh, that's well. okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's cool, though. Do we feel this left? Are we back? Are we back? Are we live? No. no? Um. Yeah, it's like definitely drop viewers. So it's like, you're back we're back we're i don't back. know if the page is dead no we're back the page didn't die no yeah weird oh uh, yeah our obs saw like the streaming software just freaking crashed uh, <laughs> i don't know i was like what the heck we're frozen all right yeah so we're back <laughs> weird yeah definitely uh i don't know if it kicks everyone out i feel bad sorry guys i'm sorry but we were going to wrap it up anyway, I guess. Probably... I think if you stay on the page, it's fine. But I think if you does leave... It? Well, yeah, but cause... I don't know, a mobile doesn't do the same thing? Like, yeah, it just let you just, sit there? This just let me sit here. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. I, I checked it. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't know if it just kills it for everybody and then everyone's, like, gone. I, like, feel bad that it does that. Does that. Anyways. We're going to get out of here. Thank you all for watching and hanging out with us today. Happy Sunday, everybody. Uh, thanks to everyone who supports the channel, of course. Uh, thanks to all who spend the time here watching. Click that like button. Very important for other people to see uh, the videos on YouTube. Help with the algorithm. Uh, we will be back next Sunday with more Come Horror. I'll schedule a stream. We'll probably do another standalone for fun. Do we try Carnival of Horrors and try sure. some more Investigator Starter decks? I don't know. Seemed like fun. I have fun playing it. Maybe we'll tweak the decks a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. But we are going to play uh, more Arkham Horror next Sunday, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe to the channel so you do not miss that. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel in any way, uh, link, uh, links for all that stuff and information are down in the video description. If you're looking for other Arkham Horror videos, uh, feel free to check out the playlist also in the video description. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks everyone for being here, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.